and Twitch talk. Ah, the Lord. <laughs> I hate the mobile version of t t Twitch. It sucks. <laughs> I mean, I still use it, but why? Why are you not? Why are you not on my fucking earbuds? You got this. I believe in you. You can if do it. If my fucking earbuds would connect, I won't have as much of a problem. Okay, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it's working now. Maybe. I mean, I can see the stream up and active over there, but... Yeah, looks I'm like it's I'm stuck on an ad read, so I don't know if audio for it works. Oh, you're good. Okay. And something tells me uh, Amazon has no intention of ending this ad anytime soon. <sighs> Probably not. <laughs> Hey, King oh, of Cereal. Uh, whoops, sorry about that, King. Uh, I forgot to have my thing open. Let me let me fix that real quick for King. Da -da -da. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> got 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 fix it up first. I forgot I forgot to turn it on. Hold on, hold on. I regret right. nothing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. where do I turn? Where's my thingy at my shelf? Um, I, uh, 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 no redemption yet. Okay, there we go. Uh, but both King, uh, run, use the thing again, and uh, Dan do that thing again. I forgot to turn on the thing, which actually keeps track of how many times you guys do that. So. Thank you, Dan, and then King. Feel free to do it as well. If you if you're here, King, oh, I want to make sure you get your your book for the day. Ah, I star we two books to your shelf. Uh, let's see. Do do do. Actually, we'll just do. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. This that until king comes back okay so we should be good for right now it sounds like it's all good uh king when i come back feel free to do your book as well make sure that works uh i really need to actually start having on but it's a very recent thing that i started including so uh but everything looks good fantastic all right hello and welcome dear patrons to the tables of tartarus a chapter of purgatory corner Today, I am your storyteller, Sin Speaks, and we are joined here by Ania, or Storyestri, Cyril, Gelmar, Dakota, Rue, and Sapphire. Uh, let me shout Hello. out Storyestri. There you go. Shout out for Story. Uh, we are going to be continuing the tale of Tyrant's Wrath. Come on in, take a seat, and let your imagination run free. Okay. Uh... Last we left off for you folks, let me go back to the proper map that I should actually be on. <laughs> uh, and he has disappeared now. Uh, last we left off, you guys had managed to defeat the uh, necromancer up top uh, in the, the horrifying space of uh, rain and, and falling boulders and uh, ruins aplenty. <clears throat> and... Uh, he, he was a stubborn little chap. He, he succeeded, what, seven constitution saving throws in a row, if I recall correctly. Um, oh, yeah. Losing only to, to Cyril, headbutting the shit out of him. <laughs> and, damn uh... Right. Huh? You're damn right. Yeah. And then, uh, y'all finally managed to beat him. He fell down to the floor, turned into this weird pile of goo. The other, uh, two, the, the ogre that couldn't actually hit a single individual for the life of him. And the, uh, the ghoul that managed to survive after being headbutted into the, uh, ogre. The other, uh, ghoul which, uh, Ooh. eliminated, uh, Ania, um, or knocked down Ania, I should say, uh... Why is my shit? Oh, okay. gone forever. <laughs> uh, it got it got fucked up. It got mick fucked up, and uh, I think I think Rue fucking erased its existence, if I recall correctly. <laughs> 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 just fucking ripped into pieces but um after you guys had had defeated them and kind of slarred through them a little bit um they turned into more puddles and piles of goo 
that just kind of tried to to worm its way towards each other. So Aenea took out her staff, imbued it with the uh, druidic powers of nature, and just slapped the shit out of the pile of goo that used to be a necromancer. Till it exploded, violently, with great force. Uh, and then the rain washed away all the sins that you had collected upon the day. Um... After you guys had finished that, that glorious fight, you guys had uh, finally started to make your way downstairs. It went from a torrential, uh, uh, or from a soft downpour to a tor torrential downpour. So outside it is raining, it is pouring. You guys can hear the force of the rain pounding against even the walls and the ceiling of uh, the area as you guys walk down the stairs. Uh, there is water slowly gathering in the area based from upon the uh, the hole from above uh, and that is just slamming down into the ground is uh, decently loud in the in the area as it is right now uh, and once you guys get all the way to the bottom and you look at the cage that you had put the dragonborn in previously he is no longer there and Aenea specifically recalls that there was a second individual in the area that she could have sworn she had saw, and is also what Gelmore had tracked earlier, uh, or had gone uh, around and tracked earlier. And so most likely that second individual had gotten to the guy while you were upstairs. At least that is currently uh, most likely the train of thought that you guys would, uh, that Aenea specifically would have going through her head. Hmm? Uh, wouldn't I assume that the necromancer was the other individual I saw? Uh, you had seen the necromancer. You had seen uh, the guy walking around as both uh, Sapphire and Dakota were already upstairs. So okay. if the necromancer had managed to be down there, he would need to teleport or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. As the rumbling okay. of the room was maybe two minutes after you had seen the other guy. Okay, so like around. half and half. Yeah, so it's possible it was the necromancer if he could teleport, but mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But yeah, so you guys all get to the ground floor. You guys see the empty cage. Dispute. Fuck. <laughs> Rue, you still do you still have that uh, locate object spell? Oh, let me check. You spent all that time down here putting him away. And he still got out? Darn. Yes, that would seem to be the case. I suppose this organization wouldn't simply exist if it was as easy to take down as he was. Well, she's gonna look at her things in her book and mm -hmm. then look up with, like, uh, up to the group, like, oh, I forgot that I did not study it today. Real. <laughs> My <Hi>. heart. <laughs> Would you be able to locate it another day? Or oh, for sure. How long <laughs> is the range again? I think I also have it. Uh, One thousand uh, feet. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll be gone by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll unless we can late. find their trail. It's rain. It's pouring outside. I think we'll find a trail out there. We could check downstairs. Maybe they're hiding. Wasn't my initial it's concern. Possible. I wouldn't do exactly What was that, Gelmar? I can't hear you. It was my initial concern. He says, looking down the crevice. Something tells me there is a bit more more to the basement than there was to the surface. Though that might just be suspicion. <sighs> and the last thing, I would not trust that they would challenge the rain unless it, they saw it as an unavoidable situation. Hmm. Just as looking fine? back down the tunnel. But I also don't really want to risk sitting down for a rest until I'm certain that there's no one down there. Uh, Sapphire? Yes? Could you come with me to the entrance? It is pouring out, but if they have left, maybe we can see some remnants of tracks. Sounds good to me. So, Ania will take Sapphire to, like, the entrance or just, like, to a window to check outside mm -hmm. and see if there's any signs of escape from the, uh, the keep, the watchtower. 
Okay, whichever one of you has the higher perception, which I assume... Actually, sorry, higher survival, because this is uh, uh, track hunting. Uh, feel free to roll it with advantage. I assume that would be Sapphire. Uh, my survival uh, is 14. Survival, where are you? <laughs> it's the last one. Uh, regular survival, not passive, by the way. Oh, that, that's uh, fire bonus. I'm at four. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. also at four. Uh, okay. Ania will give guidance. Okay. And... Well, uh, how's the lighting? Uh, the lighting uh, right now is. Actually, that's a good question. Um, I have dark vision. That's why I'm asking. It's a, that's mm -hmm. a good point, actually. <laughs> so, Sapphire would definitely be the one who should be seeing it. Um, <laughs> it is very dark outside uh it, you you guys know what it looks like on a cloudy day uh specifically during a rainstorm right um how kind of like muddled dark it gets it's not like properly <laughs> pitch black or like you know actually like nighttime or anything like that but it's like that weird muddled gray dark uh, uh looks and stuff that's basically what it looks like outside the rain is slamming down into the ground is a very high dc uh for this um because again you know the rain the mud the sight mm -hmm. etc um so yeah you're you're welcome to roll it you will have advantage and uh nia you said you'd be giving guidance yes okay so i just do a roll 1d4 yeah and that I always forget the damn Oh, well, period. every little bit helps. Uh, dot, yeah, plus one. Uh, dot 1d20 plus 4.adv. Yeah. yeah, I know. I just forget the period every time. So I'm like oh. halfway through <laughs> typing it out and I'm like, wait a minute. That's fair. <laughs> so Ania will like put her I'm staff on the phone, please. <laughs> uh -huh. Please stop. And envelope into her, envelope her in a brief glow and to. Aid plus. her slightly on her quest. Ooh. For plus eight, or just do I put plus ADV or uh period ADV? Period. Mm -hmm. ADV. Hey, stop leaning. I don't want to drop you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh. Ooh. <laughs> At least it wasn't the natural all, like, one. Rolls from last week. <laughs> well, I mean, ten is okay in total. Yeah, yeah, ten's pretty decent. It's not gonna get you in the middle of a rainstorm. Um, but you guys are are looking outside, and uh, again, like the rain's heavy, the wind's heavy. It, it legitimately feels <laughs> like a uh, um was the word uh monsoon is like flowing through like it's heavy rain the ground is starting to get muddled with water uh it's almost mm. like it's flowing over the ground to some degree and uh as you guys are looking at the ground you for just a brief moment kind of see a little bit of the tracks uh you do see a single footprint uh and it seems to be going to where are you guys on me Think about where the map is. Uh, Those are my headphones. Stop the it. Map? There we are. <laughs> uh, you That's guys are Gleaming Meadows to the east, I believe I said. Mm -hmm. So it would be going to the south. Yeah, the tracks, the single footprint that you saw uh, was angled towards the south. Whether or not they will continue going south is incredibly mm -hmm. debatable. Um, okay. but that's, that's all you can see before even that footprint gets washed away and there's, uh, nothing that remains of it. Okay. All right. And Ania will go back with Sapphire so Sapphire can report it to the group. Okay. Okay. I'll be truthful. I was distracted by my daughter. Well, you <laughs> yeah. <say> it's okay. <laughs> Your daughter's like, I wish to to let folks know the hobbies. <laughs> Honestly, it's yeah, so, the best policy. For sure. So you walk back in, you tell them basically all that, uh, the rest of y'all. Yeah, the footprint is going south, but that's all we saw. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, at least it gives us a direction. That's true. At least, hopefully, they're not still here. Perhaps. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll be going very far with the rain going like that. Mm. Exactly. Um, I, does Rue feel that it is like necrotic rain or like it's just like regular? Because we did say it was like what something magical, right? Yeah, magical uh, you can energy. definitely feel magic in the air. The rain itself doesn't feel necrotic, uh, at least to the best of your knowledge. Um, both Sapphire and Ania... Both of you guys are in immense pain at the moment. Uh, Sapphire, your your right forearm specifically, uh, the bite went deep and it did uh, strain the bone itself when they bit down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, you can see that there is, like, uh, not quite infected f- flesh, but it's, like, you can see infection starting to, to occur from it. Uh, like, you know, general iwi infection not zombie infection um ania you can feel the same thing with your shoulder they bit all the way down to your bone and ripped a bit out (laughs) okay um ania is going to do cure wounds on herself and then one on Mm -hmm. sapphire okay it it does seem to um mostly heal It, it it makes it so it does it stops bleeding uh and it it pretty much kind of scars it over a little bit uh but there is that same necrotic energy that you can feel still lingering and just kind of latching on to the both of you still okay oh, let me just still. go ahead and roll mm-hmm. does the cure wounds still uh heal yeah okay so first one's Aenea, second one is sapphire but wow. it doesn't matter because they're both the same <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go over and I'm going to take a look at these wounds of theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they are both... The, the, the thing that bit them, the ghouls that bit them, were creatures of necrotic energy. And mm-hmm. so their bites still kind of fuel that same kind mm-hmm. of energy. Uh, and it's still lingering uh, in their wounds. Is this something that, like my lay on hands could fix uh your lay on hands is uh are we also flavoring that to be necrotic no no that's that's healing okay um is it divine healing i mean yeah it says my your blessed touch can heal wounds i Mm can um more meant with our uh, flavoring i have (laughs) I have lesser restoration, which is poison oh, yeah. curing. That works. Yeah, I can, I can do disease and neutralize poisons. You, yeah, I forgot that cure wounds, uh, not cure wounds. That uh, lay on hands does that. Those were both. Those would both would both work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, <laughs> my words. Uh, nature magic is not considered to be divine in this world. By the way, they are two separate types of magic. Um, so just I'm just gonna like kind of reach out to both of them, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them both 15 points of like from the lay on hands, mm-hmm. and there's gonna I'm basically gonna be just sort of like wipe my hand o- my hands over the top of the wound, mm-hmm. and as my hands uh, pass over the wound, that that glowing red fungus that you've seen. Uh, that you've seen me, that you've seen happen before, just sort of appears right behind it. Mm-hmm. It'll, it glows and pulsates for a little bit before it sort of just dies and falls off like ash. Hmm. I think that should take care of it. Very nice. May I nature check the fungus? <laughs> more than welcome to. Yay. <laughs> like, Ania just stares intently at her shoulder the whole time. She's like, what the fuck are you doing to me? <laughs> uh, 16 is pretty good. Oh. Uh, Sarah, I'll leave that description to you since it's your ability. The 
the fungus itself is recognizable from like the types of from like types of lichen and and stuff but Mm -hmm. it's not it, it's not normal that any of them glow or do or just appear immediately like that mm -hmm. all right fair fair okay so it looks like a, a an offshoot or something it 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 looks it looks natural and unnatural all at the same time got it so your wounds do heal, the necrotic energy is displaced uh, by the lay on hands, um, and it does seem to fade. It definitely feels a lot better. Uh, both of them will be quite nasty scars, uh, specifically uh, Sapphire's uh, glove. I feel like there's a better name for glove, not gauntlet. Um, gauntlet? It's like it's like it, it goes all the way to her her elbow, so I'm not sure what they would be called. I usually think of them as like hunting gloves. I guess glove would be bracers. the right word. Oh, maybe bracers. Um, anyways, that is torn a little bit right at the forearm because obviously it went through. Um, so at some point you'd probably want to replace that. Ania, your it bit through. Probably your your shirt. Uh, I think it your your cloak probably would have been out of the out of the way, um, just because the angle that it would have had to bite at. So your cloak probably isn't damaged, uh, but your shirt definitely is. Okay, and I'm assuming like left shoulder. Uh, yes. Okay. Hey, all right. Looks like it hit pretty deep. I think that was. I got eight needed. points of healing from cure oh. wounds, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm at eighteen. Is that correct? I believe so. Yep. Okay. If we hadn't come there, as soon as you... oh, go ahead, Sapphire. <laughs> no, I said I just wanted to clarify. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So if Rue hadn't gotten to me as fast as she did, I, I'm not sure what would have happened. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <sighs> I suppose well, that means we all need to be a bit more wary in going forward here. I Especially... think wariness is what got us in the trouble in the first place. <laughs> he tells his head confused. How so? When Dakota, me, and Saf are all up there, you guys were still down here bickering about the body. I agree with it's serial that we can't exactly leave him behind in case he was going to think about joining up with our little friend, he says, very visibly, quote, Mark with his fingers up top. So we did need to put him somewhere. I just didn't expect that he would be one to break from the chains. It may or be the that there was another... That Maybe that there was another person here. Probably should have just killed him and then went on our merry way. I'm still not, not convinced that murder is exactly the right decision, even with him at the moment. Nothing else. Yeah. Would have been, and would have Call been. it execution, then. Ania uh, turns to look at Cyril. With no you and Ru had only just gotten here. A person, Gelmar took care of him all on his own, and apparently he's very important to something Gelmar's looking for. I don't think you have the right to say if he should be murdered or not. I see your point. Speaking okay. of, we should check the downstairs. I do agree on that. Indeed. I love the idea that this little five foot girl just like <laughs> walks up to this nine foot giant and it's just like pointing her staff at him. <laughs> you have no right. You have no right here. <laughs> Hi Mima, welcome to the stream. 
Uh, I'm actually just gonna turn. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn and look for the stairs to head down to the uh, to the lower level. Mm -hmm. Crap, that's right. The guy probably still has my has my rope. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Your rope is uh, at the the bottom of the cage on the ground. Um, It's it's cut. so it's like two two pieces of rope now instead of one. So in other words, I need to find someone with a mending can trip. Have to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Oh. Still, um, I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, there are stairs fairly so close specific. to you guys, um, and so uh, there 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 stairs that lead down to the ground. The ground is very mushy. As you guys, uh, I assume you you are uh, descending. Uh, Cyril, I assume Nia, Galmar, Rue, Sapphire, and Dakota. Are you guys following them, or are you staying on the middle? Heck yeah, I'm following them. I'm probably the one in the front. Just it's fair. I've still got. Yeah. I'm I definitely the don't like the idea of so. splitting up again. So yes, I'm following. <laughs> I am <laughs> tank partners. Don't keep me out of the tank group. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I'll follow. Uh, I know. Um, is this volume any better? Splitting or should I turn that higher? Well for us. That that should good. be good. Uh Perfect. you can you hear him, Cyril? Mm-hmm. Alright, cool. Uh so yeah, you guys kind of go to the stairs. Uh Gelmar and Rue go to the front. Um, so that they're pretty much able to tank whatever uh it hits them. Uh I assume, Cyril, you would be standing near the back in case something decides to sneak up. Yeah. Okay. And then the rest of y'all just kind of filtered in the middle. Um, however you guys decide to filter yourselves. But you guys go down uh, into the, the, the bomb floor. Um, down there, there's not a whole lot. As I said, the ground is very mushy. As you guys are walking down there, it's pretty much perfectly in line for the rain from up top to be slamming into you guys. Uh, so it's falling pretty hard into you. Um, it, it looks like it used to be kind of a way to filter the water through uh the area kind of like a almost a tunnel system whether or not it was intentionally dug out or rain over the years had corroded it you're not entirely sure um but there are definitely a lot of paths down here that don't look intentionally made there are a couple that do as you guys wandering through the area uh there's only one that really sparks your notice um the rest of them are either blocked in uh filled with uh gunk or uh fauna uh or sorry flora that is just coating the area or it's so unbelievably broken that you're not entirely sure stepping in there would result in a a mudslide or just the entire thing crashing down so it's probably best not to uh but you guys do check a little bit of the areas um as the rain just kind of filters into the ground uh and starts making puddles um walking into one of the rooms uh it looks like this uh duke it looks like a small abandoned shop. Imagine there's a little bit more water on the ground, and uh, imagine, you know, the, the window's not there, um, but it's pretty much covered in grass. Uh, it looks like, you know, there's a bunch of books that have mold on them. Uh, there's vines coating the area. The ground is covered in mud, water, stone, uh, and uh, all kinds of random trinkets that probably used to have some kind of value, including uh, quite a few... Uh, rugs and other stuff like that as a couple of barrels uh some important stuff down here is there's a lot of rusted shields swords and armor and you know that as scrap these can be sold to blacksmiths specifically uh galmar knows this uh as they all look to be not in particularly good condition but usable as you know melting scrap or or if you really fine it down a little bit probably can be used as other stuff um there's some good there's some good good iron underneath the uh, rust yeah basically including a full-size tower shield uh which you know can sell for some pretty good stuff even in its really crappy condition it's not even close to good enough to replace uh ruse one but it, it is a giant hunk of metal when you guys when gummer tries to pick up for example you can tell from your years of experience inside the the forge it's 25 pounds it's heavy boy is completely rusted over um See where the guards would gather when they weren't on duty mm-hmm. 
There's also leather armor, scale mail. If you guys want to pick those up, I have the stat, I have the the quantities and stuff for them. Um, that's if you guys want want to collect them. Anything leather armor that's in good condition or good enough to replace my arm, Kevin? Mm -hmm. That's a good <laughs> point. Yeah, <laughs> you you would you on the leather armor that's down there. You would be able to pretty much take off the vanguard. That's what it's called. Um, you would be able to take off the vanguard and slip it onto yours. It's not super clean, but compared, you know, to the rest of the clothing that you have on currently, it's not that bad. Um, so, so it, it does... It's not holy. Huh? It's not holy. That is true. It is blocking some of the wind, uh, or some of the rain, uh, just a little bit from you, uh, which is very, very nice. Um... Vanbrace. That's the word I'm looking for, not Vanguard. <laughs> Thank you. And another one. <laughs> and another one. And an I get there eventually. <laughs> uh, there is quite a few things around here. Uh, if anyone would like to, I will take one roll uh, from, from any of you. So whoever has the highest one basically works here. There is a survival check that you guys can use. Uh, there are a few maps in here. Uh, so you guys can look at them, kind of figure out what the maps are for, assuming that they don't break. Uh, there are a few scrolls in here. That is a perception check to see whether or not there's anything of particular note in there. Um, obviously, some tinder boxes, lock boxes, wet stones, all of which in bad condition but can be fixed if you guys want to keep them. Um, you guys do see an old dagger in the bookshelf. Looks ceremonial. Uh, it does not look like it is used in combat, but unlike everything else, uh, it is pristine condition. It does not look like it has been affected by time at all. And around a bunch of moldy books and around, you know, a bunch of uh, flora and all that stuff is immediately noticeable. And then there are a few tired cloaks and everything like that around, which will also be a perception check. A little bit harder perception check. Can I, can I look at the knife? The knife, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanna, I wanna look at it and see if it's like magical or anything, or if it's like has any weirdness to it. Uh, when you walk out to the knife and you you grab it out of its bookshelf, it is a beautiful piece of equipment. It is extremely brittle. Even you can tell that from just holding it. If you tried to stab something with this, it would break before the guy did if you did any form of combat. It was absolutely used in, in some weird ceremony, most likely. You've seen uh, a couple people do this in your travels. Uh, usually they're not very good ceremonies, but uh, it could be used for sacrificing like animals, for example. Very useful for that. Um... But it is completely pristine. Uh, roll me an investigation real quick. Investigation. Ooh, that's a mm. minus one. Okay. <laughs> Jason, with my metal oh. skills, could I... Oh! Dang. Never mind, I guess I'm probably not going to need to. That works. Uh, you can tell, based upon just, like, looking at it, rubbing over it, uh, it does have a quality for magic. You is not innately magical, but it, it does have like slots uh, in the handle, which can be used for things that are similar to uh, what you know is from like uh, Gelmar's runes. You can put magic into it and it looks like it conducts it really, really well. But there is nothing in it currently. Mm. Hi, anyone want a, a weird knife you can put stuff in? <laughs> That's a very specific That knife question. looks like a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> actually, may I, actually, may I see that for a moment? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, son, um, I'm actually going to give it a sniff. Okay. Uh, give it a sniff oh, the knife. yeah. <laughs> when you smell it, uh, is is not iron. Uh, is some kind of uh, metal that you don't quite recognize. But you do recognize it was crafted with extreme quality. Uh, like, this is this is very pure metal, unlike most of the other ones you had. Probably why it's so brittle as well, because it doesn't have a whole lot holding it together, necessarily. Must have been made by a jeweler. Doesn't smell like any style of general metal I've ever encountered. But he says looking it over before... For giving it a quick spin and handing it back. 
You can smell metals? It helps to... You kind of learn a few things when you work with basically every sort of metal and then uh, forge back home. Ah. Most of them have right. their own distinct... Most of them have their own distinct feel and smell. Old trick I learned. That dwarf, if nothing else, that dwarf was very skilled with that one. I... <laughs> Just the concern from Dakota. <laughs> Perception check. All right. Uh, <laughs> did you want to do a perception check on the uh, scrolls that are around or the tattered cloaks that are around? Uh, I want to start with the scrolls. Will I also be able to do it on the cloaks or are we doing like one roll per person? No, I'm going to be doing one roll per, per person for this room because there's oh, okay. so many different roles to make and there's also so many different people. Yeah. Would I'm actually anyone... over there looking at the scrolls too. Can I just give her advantage? Uh, yeah, you could. Ooh, but if you do that, I won't be able to look at the cloaks. What's that? If if you give me if I do the roll on the scrolls, I won't be able to look at the cloaks. Mm -hmm. Are you cold? I'll look at the cloaks. Okay. I will. Okay. Sorry, God, I I'm playing D&D right so now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, will this also count as the books? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I will... Ania will guidance herself, so... A little 1d4. Okay. And... Ooh, and nice. what is Cyril doing? Uh, I'm giving you advantage. Okay, I meant so more I... Oh, uh, well, with how tall he is, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's looming over her. Look at what's up, uh, what's at the on the top shelves, and oh, yeah, okay, help him bring it down to where she can see. Smart, smart, okay, okay. So, perception advantage, nat fucking 20. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> and that is plus four. <laughs> fucking hell, 31. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I didn't, I, didn't have a, I didn't have anything for a nat 20, but... Yeah. Do, do you have anything for a nat 30? <laughs> nat 31. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm actually going to give you... Hold on. Um, uh, so, I'm going to give you guys uh, specifically scrolls uh there i am making an adjustment to the base rules of scrolls in 5e uh i'm making it more similar to Baldur's gate 3 because i prefer that system uh <laughs> the best roll story we'll ever get <laughs> that's fair uh so the way that Baldur's gate 3's uh scroll system works and the way i'm going to be using it as well is that if you have a scroll and you are able to cast spells you can cast the spell as if you were that class using your spell modifier uh with all of the uh other things it requires specifically not including uh material components uh there are no spells in this game above level five that were transmuted into scrolls and uh generally speaking for most scrolls you do have to uh, know someone who who can use that learn that spell to use it uh or at least something similar to it uh so if you get like a uh a scroll of revivify then obviously the cleric would have to tell you how it works before you can use it but you do have a cleric so that would work um but with that nat 31 uh i will say i had one scroll that i'm going to give you guys there's a couple of them and they're hard to read. So each of these scrolls will actually take an arcana check to learn what it is specifically. Okay. These ones, uh, honestly, you guys can also take a long rest or a short rest and just read it as time goes on. Depends on uh, what you guys want to do, essentially. Um, but you do have uh, three scrolls in your hand. 
And uh, as you are looking through the books uh, with that Nat 31 with the fucking eyes of God, <laughs> <laughs> you, you do find uh, a book. Specifically, it's one at the very, 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 very top of the shelf, kind of like squished between a couple. Uh, it, it does not look to have any damage. And as you point out to Cyril, he does grab it and it down to you. It is a journal. More oh. importantly... It is a wizard's journal, Ooh. full of wizard oh. spells. It is a journal and a spell book. Sick. Wow. And obviously, almost none of the spells make any fucking sense to you because they're wizard we don't have handwriting. A wizard. Yeah, but you do I mean, now have a wizard's and she hasn't, book. And because she hasn't translated his jargon yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's you like do a has a. Every huh? wizard has a very uh, weird and usually very enigmatic way of filling out their notes. Mm -hmm. So it, that's why it takes so long to translate somebody else's spells into your wizard spellbook because you actually have to translate their jargon into your jargon. <laughs> yep. There's like one of one of them's just like a blank page, but like in the center of it, it's like a really cursive egg. Egg. <laughs> Egg. Egg your enemies. This thing is atrocious. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm. So Nia's very happy about this. And she's no longer mad at Cyril. <laughs> <laughs> she will look for a name. A name? Uh, we're going to go with. Hold on. Uh. We're going to go with. Ooh, I mean, I ooh, that's fun. Backlog you could use. Uh, maybe, but I have. Send, send me the name. Uh, and I'll see what I do with it. Probably won't do it the same way you did, but uh, I have an idea for it. Do do do. Ooh, it's like that character's cousin. I like that. Okay, I'm going to say that the name that you find in this book. Ooh, okay. Name that you find in this book. I have, I have, it's, it's coming, it's coming to fruition. Hold on, just give me two seconds. Uh, <laughs> the name inside the book no. is going to be Leodin uh, Moonshadow. Leodin Ooh. Moonshadow. Got it. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's that's the name that you you will you will find in there. Moon shadow okay. bit is is important, but mm, for later. Uh So, don't we yeah. know someone named Moon Shadow? Uh I believe you do. Uh let me see. Uh you do not. You you personally do not. You do know uh Silverleaf. And you do know Moon Blade, but you don't know Moon Shadow. Although, actually, how familiar would your character be with adventuring parties? I mean, I want to say he'd be pretty familiar with them, mm -hmm. because he would be he would be he would be the one on the outskirts the, the most, more That's than the, the inner layers. Do you keep up to tabs with um? Big name adventuring parties. I think unless it's like uh, a name that's passed around a lot, mm -hmm. um, not really. Okay, in that case, you would know of a group called the Iron Wayfarers, but you won't know who's mm -hmm. in it. The reason you would know of the group, though, is because the blacksmith in uh, in Harmonious Haven is Boren Iron Fist, who was the right hand of the Iron Wayfarers. They got popular because they were the very first group to ever set sail on the sea and tackle one of the raging whirlwinds that is set around the island, uh, about a mile away from the uh, the rifts. And they're only they they're they're the only people who've ever adventured out there and come back uh, without you know, majorly having casualties or anything like that. And that's how they started getting their fame and named Iron Wayfarers. Um, their leader, though, you know, has been missing for 
around a year now or two. Is Dakota familiar with this name? Uh, you would be, but whether or not uh, Ania states the name is up to you. Mm -hmm. um, she's going to be looking at the book and be very excited about it. She's not mm -hmm. going to state the name unless someone asks her about it. Okay. Uh, if anyone like comes over and is like, what you looking at? And she'll be like, oh, look at this journal I found! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was my moon shadow? That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I mean, when Dakota hands off like the knife, yeah, he'll probably like wander over and be like, I "Find anything interesting over there? Got some scrolls over there, I see." Yeah, we found some really cool scrolls, and 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 we found this journal. Cyril found it on the top, top, top shelf. It's a wizard journal. Oh. And, and the name is Leonid Moon Shadow. See. And she'll, like, hold it up to Dakota to show the name. And she's Moonshine. acting like herself again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Moonshadow, uh, huh? And Dakota, you would recognize that last name. Very, mm. very easily. From the Iron Wayfarers. Specifically, it is the high elven uh, sorceress uh, named Kel... Oh, my God. Kylithra. Kylithra, thank you. My my brain was saying Kel, not Kai, for some reason. Uh, but Kylithra Moonshadow um, is one of the prominent members of that party. She came from the Elven Kingdom. Uh, she is one of the only High Elves that have ever traveled with an adventuring party for longer than a few months, uh, and is one of the only uh, sorceress or sorcerer uh, High Elves that have ever traveled outside of the kingdom. Period. Mm. <laughs> think I know someone with that last name. No, really? Yeah, we we crossed paths once or twice. Oh, maybe it's a relative. Maybe, yeah. But who is it? Uh, well, I'm not familiar with the relative, but I did... <laughs> once um know a person who was friends with the with the person there uh kylith ramoon shadow the iron wayfarer is you familiar mm. and i don't i assume i i'm not you it depends on whether or not you would keep up with uh adventurers very often i don't think Particularly, unless they dealt dealings with the actual druid circle. Not usually, no. Not this okay. one, at least. Okay. No, Although, if anyone, so. if anyone has... Uh, if anyone really focuses on the elven culture inside of the kingdom, you would recognize the, the last name Moon, specifically. I don't know if anyone actually has focus on that kingdom, though. <laughs> oh, not I. I get this point. Basically, the only thing Yelmar would recognize is, huh, that was the organization in that the old Forge Master was always talking about. Yeah. Would I be familiar from my uh, long ago context? That's a good question, actually. It was very long ago. Roll me a history check with advantage. It'll do. It'll do. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So that was quite My, a while ago. <laughs> it was with advantage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. That worked. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Unnatural <laughs> 20. What did you get? Uh, unnatural 20. Eight. So, uh, um, you would know... It, it 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 doesn't ring a bell for for a minute there, but as as you know, uh, Dakota talks about the the Iron Wayfarers and and uh, Calithra. Um, you do you do you do remember something? There are three prominent families inside of the Elven Kingdom: the Moons, the uh, Stars, and the Leaves. Uh, the Leaves are the political majors. The Moons are the combat majors. And the stars are the uh, kind of um, scholars. The scholars, yeah. 
So the most prominent of the stars is Serafina Star Whisperer. She is one of the, the number one most well-known spellcasters in the on the world. And she's also the mm -hmm. only star that has ever done combat. Anyone who decides to learn combat uh, usually changes their name once they mature to have Moon in their name. Uh, usually, they there are three different families that kind of blend together because of the way that elves uh, reproduce. Uh, and then the leaves are the political ones. They are the ones that usually take positions of power. They're usually ones that do the the political intrigue between the two between multiple kingdoms. They're the ones who do trade and travel, um, and are usually the ones who don't really like people uh, interacting with them all that much um with the cities and stuff like that so you would know the most about probably the stars and the least about the moons okay let me just write this down okay but that does mean that this was a combat wizard <laughs> oh elves with the last name of moons or in any sort of form usually are very oriented toward combat they're one of the big families in the Elven Kingdom. You don't say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do say. <laughs> All right, I'm going to insight check Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> Dakota just like, uh-huh. <laughs> that, that, so that fucking says immediately gets my attention. <laughs> Cyril just like snaps his head down, just like the fuck you say. <laughs> uh, feel free to the roll an insight, my friend. Oh, nothing, nothing. You can definitely tell that 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 statement made him nervous. Uh, <laughs> but you're not sure why. Oh man, it must be because wizards have no honor. It must be. <laughs> Wizards are the antithesis the to the cowboy duel. code. The wizards don't <laughs> duel. You're <laughs> so knowledgeable, Dakota. Is there something that you know? Uh, no. Just... Actually, Dakota, roll bluff. <laughs> oh, sorry, deception, because you said no. <laughs> roll me deception. <laughs> Alright, let me see here. Right. Ah, that's gonna be an 18. <laughs> Just the bear roll. <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> and I roll insight against the perception. The oh deception. yeah, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Oh, oh my god. Holy! <laughs> what is it with oh you and bad toddies? What the crap? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> I get oh, that toy you you little fucking last week. God damn. My special she wants eye. to hear the story. She wants to know the story. Fucking special eyes just digging into Dakota's soul. soul. <laughs> that innocent stare that just you can't lie to. <laughs> so, so yeah, Dakota, keep, keep, keep with the sentence going and then kind of explain what Neo would be seeing as you explain it. Cyril, you, you probably would, would believe him based on, mm -hmm. on those roles. Uh, you don't really know too much about like their body movements or anything like that. Ania's mm -hmm. fucking locked in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so Dakota kind of just like waves it off. It's like, no, just... Uh, had it reminded me of something or another. Uh, I think Ania would probably definitely notice how nervous Dakota is at that. Specifically at the mention of uh, people with the last name of Moon. And okay. the fact that they do combat. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Just people with the last name of Moon. That mention caused Dakota to suddenly slightly startle at it, you know? Alright. Ania says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I do say! <laughs> I do say! <laughs> God damn, fucking Nat 20's all over the place! Yeah. That right, cool, yeah, so, uh... 
you know, Dakota's just kind of slightly awkward, and I was assume Cyril's just like, oh, no, that sounds about right. Elves. Slowly just gives him the side eye. <laughs> oh. Mm, it must and, be because uh, they don't do any duels. That's, um, they have such bad attitudes. I remember that about high elves. <laughs> no, yeah, certainly. If you say it seven times in your head, you'll remember it forever. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's all about the code, you know? And I remember that barkeeper's words. And mm -hmm. Aenea will chirp up, and she's not directing this to anyone. She's literally just doing this to make it even more awkward. You know, my dad was a high elf. <laughs> was he now? Uh-huh. Uh, I thought you were a uh, born and bred wood elf. My mom's a wood elf. Oh, no. That's so. What kind of high elf was your, was your pops? Uh, what are the different high elves? Uh, Leaf is political majors, Moon is combat majors, and Stars are scholars. Oh, okay. Would, would all high elves be under those three? Uh, only major families. The rest of them, uh, you're pretty much forbidden to take one of those three names if you aren't part of the major families. The rest of them usually just have stuff relating to the cosmos or nature itself or other things like that. Okay, would uh, Dad be in one of the threes or not? Nah? Or would, would he be, be a, Would Dad be a star or would he be nothing? Um... He probably would have been Star as a scholar. Okay. Okay. No, he was one of the stars. Oh. Of course. Fascinating. Can I? Can hmm? I insight that? <laughs> you can sure try. <laughs> You're more than welcome say? to. All right. Let me let me head in with my plus zero. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, that's a 16. Oh, that's pretty that's good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, would this be... She's not exactly lying. Would this uh, be deception? Probably a persuasion check. Persuasion. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you are not directly lying or saying something oh, that has... Here. Jesus. Oh that has God. some kind of falseness to it, you're usually going to roll persuasion. If you have some kind of falseness to it, it doesn't even truly have to be false, but it has to be something, you know that has more degree of false than truth you will usually roll uh deception but okay. yeah no <laughs> she, it feels like she's telling the truth yeah huh. yeah uh anyone i should recognize i mean i don't keep up with the politics there but anyone i know no he passed away when i was quite young actually oh uh my condolences <laughs> that's okay and mm -hmm. she's still quite chipper. <laughs> the room gets quiet. She's just staying there smiling. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that book sure has a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, if it. Can you read any of it, Dakota? Huh? And you will offer the book. Hmm. What? What'd you say, Cyril? Can you read any of it, Dakota? Uh... <laughs> I glance down at the book. I mean, Dakota's uh, the, the moon only, book. Dakota's the only one that's, like, specifically a spell gangster. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. I mean, technically, Rue is as well, and so is Nina. Well, I mean, the only, like, other one that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you would probably recognize a few of the spells, Dakota. At least you would recognize the basic gist of a few of them. They, they, it's, it's written in common with a little bit of Elvish mixed in there and a little bit of a few other languages as well. Uh, but you would, you would recognize... Uh, oh my god, which one would be... I can never remember which spells are wizards. Let's see. Hold on just a moment. <laughs> uh, I believe most of them are. Yeah, wizards there's... are weird. And for some reason, they can't cast Cure Wounds, which I feel what? like is bullshit. Yeah, I yeah. make it so that they can in my worlds, because uh, fuck that shit. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, wizards can can cast pretty much any spell in the game, actually, uh, as long as they can find them or be taught them. So actually, I'm going to say you do recognize a few that are on your list. Uh, one of which that is on your list that you would know is actually Inflict Wounds, which I believe is a necromancy spell. Yeah, it's a necromancy spell. Um, you would also recognize Chill Touch, another necromancy spell, uh, and huh. Bestow Curse, another necromancy spell. <laughs> wow, looks like this looks like this fella uh, dabbled in mostly death. Oh, gross. Do you think yeah. that was the man who just faced up top? He's a stomaching upward. Mm -hmm. Maybe actually. Um, oh. was the man up top an elf? Uh, you could not tell. Okay. And he is now holding the away from her. She's no longer as jived. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you would also recognize Ania that detect poison and diseases in there as well, and charm mm -hmm. person. Oh, I hate it even more. I, I, ha I have <laughs> detect poison and disease. You would also <laughs> recognize that, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of weird ones that are in there, too. Um, one that you recognize that's very uncomfortable uh, would be um, a meld into stone. Bro, are you looking at my spell sheet giving up, saying that the, all everything is really scary? <laughs> Actually, no, I was looking at Nia's sheet. <laughs> Hello, hello. You're like seeing every single spell and you're like, this is horrifying. You're like, bro, are you trying to make me a villain? <laughs> I keep forgetting you have most of us. Yeah, me and Lou actually share quite a few spells. I'm like, bro, what have I done to you? You're just picking on us. <laughs> uh, Entangle is also in there. Hmm? Yeah. Man, look, you're not exactly interested in the contents of the spells. I heard through the grapevine a few scholars was commenting that a few wizards had been known to be making a killing by selling those things. They've already mm. got spells in them even more, or so. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I want to give them the book if it has such icky spells in it, but I'll try to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. it, it may be a good idea for, for us to study this book before we actually hand it over to them. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I agree. Oh. Uh, Rue... Uh, just a little little turnaround. She's like, nope, I'm not interested in doing that. And she's going to go <laughs> look at the other bookshelves. That's fair. That's fair. There's not a whole lot on the other bookshelves around the area. Um, most of the scrolls that were in this area that aren't literal molding pieces of paper at this point were on that bookshelf. The rest of them were covered in vines, covered in other stuff like that. Oh. Sorry, um, I didn't mean to say bookshelf. She's just really disinterested in like anything to do with reading and studying. Oh. So, she, so she's like, mm, okay, and she's moving on. Uh, there, there are, there is a tree stump nearby, by the way. Oh. Inside of the area, I know how weird, but it, it's a, it's a like four foot tall tree stump that's just slapped in the corner. Well, how curious. She gonna. <laughs> mosey on over looking left and right at it all right well feel free to roll whichever is higher perception Medicine. or investigation oh which one's higher uh i guess technically perception yeah, that's much higher yeah so uh roll perception for me <clears throat> sure fair enough all right all right. Inside of the tree stump, uh, as you're looking around it, you see there is like a weird, like, kind of hole of sorts. It looks like something was kind of pushed in there. Um, as weird as that sounds, it does not look like it was made using conventional means or uh, made by time. It looks like someone put their hand against it and pushed their hand into the wood. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. that sounds kind of trappy to me. Can I just <laughs> investigate it, like, survival stuff or something? I don't know. Uh, or... to figure out whether or not there's a trap, honestly, your perception can tell you it doesn't look like there's a trap. Oh. Yeah, it, it oh. just looks like someone put something in the tree stump and they didn't want someone to find it. Mm. 
should I put my hand in? Should I not put my hand in? Excuse she's me? Gonna put her, she's going to put that her hand in. She's, she, she mutters out loud, and she's going to put her hand in. <laughs> Fair enough. Wait, you guys just watch her slide her hand into a tree stump. <laughs> um, isn't that usually where the rodents tend to hide out? Gotta get your hand bit off. <laughs> do I find She's... anything? Uh, you do. You you, you reach your like hand. That. You reach your hand pretty much all the way up to your bicep inside of this tree stump. Um, as you do, it's a very tight squeeze. But you finally manage to find something in there. As you pull out, it's a ring. It's a magical what? ring. Oh. Someone have a... Um, magical eyes. And I'm going to wave it around to whoever wants to look at it. I don't have Arcana. <laughs> I, have a neg I have a negative to Arcana. Basically, all I could identify is the metal type. I and the have it. is over. Oh, yeah. No, unless Give it to the girl. To. Give it to the girl with the magic eyes. Uh, oh, I don't believe you have Arcana, Nia. Uh, Proficiency. Oh, she oh, oh no, I. I... Okay, yeah. I thought I, I had Arcana, but I got, I think, Religion instead. Oh, uh, so, all right. Yeah. Hold on. Give okay. me, give me, give me. Yeah. Okay, she goes. So <laughs> Ru goes over and she just drops it in her hand. Or in his hands. <laughs> Yeah. You you it drops into your hand and you can immediately feel magic from it. Uh even several feet away, uh kind of slightly hunched over cuz the ceiling's not that high. Cyril can also feel just the magic emanating from the ring. This is a ring of protection. You gain a, a, a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws when wearing this ring. Uh, you guys will also notice, uh, or specifically Rue would, uh, when you pulled the ring out of the wood, the wood started to die. Oh. Oh. Shoot. Uh, Ania yeah. is going to go over to the stump, and mm -hmm. she is going to... Uh, where is it here? I know I have it. She's going to cast Druidcraft to try and perk Ooh. it back up. Oh, that work! <laughs> so she's oh, going to cast... touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, you, you, you tapped it like three times. So dang, that's a lot of Druidcraft. <laughs> oh, just, oops, just... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> druidcraft, Druidcraft. It is a cantrip. I could just keep hitting it until it's better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I will cast druid cap craft on it to try and mm -hmm. perk it up you you can as you cast druid craft on it and uh you know, your magic kind of flows through it and it, it does start to to um kind of perk up a little bit it's it's uh flower starts to bring a little bit but you do recognize uh as you're feeling it and 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 pretty much putting your energy through it uh the reason it's dying is age this is a mm -hmm. really really old stump and it should have died decades ago, but it seemed to have been pretty much held together, more or less, by this ring, just keeping it kind of safe and protected, um, and just longer life, essentially. Right. It's a very weird interaction with this with this nature item. Man, Starting to sound like the one ring. <laughs> if only I was uh, level six and had speak to plants. It's fine. <laughs> Hello, so, uh, Mr. Plant. Fuck you. Plant, I'm dying. Leave me be. <laughs> oh, it's been so bad. Let me die. Hmm? Now, Ania will stay quiet by the stump for a little bit. Okay. And then, uh, I believe, uh, Sapphire, you wanted to look at the cloaks? I wanted to look at the scrolls, but that was being taken. But yeah, ah, Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's so good. You got a freaking book out of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel free to roll yeah. me a perception check. I'm double checking. My numbers here. What's that? Okay, I'm double checking the numbers. Make sure I got it in right. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Jesus. Man, he is stealing oh. your luck. Jesus Christ! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rolling on the twenties. Uh, someone can give her advantage if they would like. Oh, is it perception? perception? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna 
I mean, I, I'll reach over and start yeah. like sifting, start like helping her like sift through them. Mm -hmm. uh, feel, feel free to to re-roll that natural one, Sephir. <laughs> okay. I swear, if there's another natural one, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> We get natural ones and twenties every campaign so far. We yeah, every <laughs> session. Every <laughs> the majority of them have been you. I'm <laughs> adding advantage, right? Digital dice, definitely. Uh, yeah, just digital go with advantage because I'm I'm sure that uh, Cyril would help you, or not Cyril. Um, Gilmore would. Maybe this is where I my thought Cyril was. Huh? Oh yeah, Cyril, Cyril said, was openly mm -hmm. said he was going to do it. I would probably be more than happy to as well, but Cyril's already on it, and well. I guess I'm just gonna be continuing, just like pulling uh, metal scraps off of some of the ruined equipment in the background. Fair, fair. All right, with that 16, that will do it just barely. <laughs> so what you find as you're you're moving through the cloaks and and Cyril's kind of brushing a bunch of them to left and the right. Cyril, you have Arcana. Uh, so you are able to tell there is some magic in here, which kind of brought you over yeah. to in the first place. And uh, Sapphire d does not. So as you as you guys are like brushing through the uh, the cloaks that are down here, it's gross. It's a lot of water in these cloaks. Uh, a lot of them are tattered. A lot of them are are messy. A lot of them are filled with uh, uh, muck what? or mud or other stuff like that. And uh, at one point, she grabs one of it and just tosses it to the side, kind of digging through the uh, the pile. And immediately, you you catch it out of the out of the air, uh, because your your body is just like that one. <laughs> and uh, as you grab it and you kind of hold it up, uh, you do recognize it. it. Is a very it is not a common sight, uh, for sure. But this is a cloak of elven kind. And I just toss great. it aside. What day? <laughs> oh no no no! You do not want to throw that aside. That's a stealth cloak. <laughs> you... Oh. With that that what? previous natural one, but then changed. She basically grabbed it, threw it into the air, just like shifting through everything, not even recognizing it. Uh, and and Seal snatched it out of the air, and just kind of held it in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> What's it well, do? I don't know how I could have missed that. <laughs> well, I think I think it would be something best suited to someone sneaky. Either Nobody either you sneaky. or Sapphire or Dakota are sneaky, or they're the long rangers. Mm -hmm. But uh, you do recognize uh, this coat specifically, Cyril, because you have seen it, it's it's a very rare item um, just because no one re it, it requires a lot of, of uh, crafting to make. It requires a lot of time spent and usually only elves make it. Hence the name Cloak of Elven Kind. Uh, usually specifically wood elves are the ones who make it. Uh, when you wear this cloak with its hood up, this is mechanicals, uh, wisdom, perception check specifically, made to see you have disadvantage, and you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide. Pulling the hood up or down requires an action. Oh. Hmm. Can I look at that for a second? Certainly. So it's just gonna like pick it up and like look at it for a moment. It's pretty nice. And the the colors seem to switch to change and shift in front of you. Uh, you shoot people a lot, so stealth's not usually your thing, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and you have invisibility. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Always help them think... get into position. Mm, yeah, I think this. I think this one might be more suited for a sapphire. Yeah. Mm, I'll throw it to sapphire. <laughs> sapphire. If you're if yeah, if you're ever looking for a replacement for uh your uh other cloak if it gets torn or whatnot. Sounds good. I, I think I'll keep it in. 
I heard a long time ago that the the reason that this is the way that it is is because the wood elves actually weave some of their own hair into it. Oh. Then again, rumors. Oh. <laughs> How'd you feel about wearing somebody else's hair, Sapphire? Well, I'm already wearing the Earth's flowers. Fair enough. <laughs> That's well, true. <laughs> that sounds all natural. Our natural. <laughs> and the, what, what else are half my ancestry? True. Mm -hmm. uh but yeah, that's about pretty much everything in here uh if you guys want to take all the swords the shields the armor and stuff that's all rusted or molding or whatever have you you are welcome to i can put in the chat what exactly you guys get um but oh right the maps i forgot about the maps uh rue i believe you were going to roll survival for that one yeah i'd love to anyone else interested in map stuff sure why not i'll do it someone needs to help <laughs> it's a 19. <laughs> probably just pulled the head off of a hammer or something like that God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rue like looks at the maps and being like, I've probably seen this once or twice. Mm -hmm. So the maps that are there and you kind of like look through them and you start pointing out bits and pieces. Uh, the map here is actually a, a more detailed, uh, uh, a more detailed landscape specifically of the Elysian Glade. Uh, so the Elven area. As well as one of the maps in particular is a more in-depth, uh, it's kind of scribbled on and kind of uh, some of the areas are hard to read. But it's uh, the Gagar Wastes, the Orkin area to the south. Oh. It's like a half-finished uh, version of the map down there. Oh. This could be very useful. Gagar Wastes and that elven area. Mm. Maybe there's a cartographer down in the haven that we could bring these to. Ooh. I would imagine they'd be able to, able to make a more sturdy variation of these. They seem a bit aged. Mm -hmm. oh, I would love to have more maps on me. I never. I can always <laughs> losing them somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> they disappear. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have a scroll case then? I, I do. Any... Uh, oh, you would? Okay. I do, I think. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, I have a scroll case stuffed full of notes for my studies or prayers for my hermit background. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. These maps are quite old, so keeping them safe until you're able to get them properly restored would probably be a very good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ania has, nice. like, this um, cylin cylinder sc uh, cylindrical scroll case. Uh, attached to her belt. Mm -hmm. And she has a few trinkets hanging off it, uh, including the sun catcher that Cyril got her in the past. Aww. There's also a mm. little wooden book that is like a wooden... It's like a little wooden carving of a book that is also hanging on the scroll case. Nice. That's cute. That's adorable. <laughs> I love that. Uh... So Ania will come over to the maps and uh, if they're already full, if they're already rolled up, uh, she will mm -hmm. gently tuck them into her scroll case. Uh, if not, she will gently roll them up and do so. Cool, cool. So you gently roll it up uh, each of the different maps. Most of the maps on the table are just rotten or eaten or war damage to such an extreme you can't really read them so you have uh the gagar waste one you have the uh the elysian glade one and then you have one that is the surrounding area it, it the details are kind of vague on it and it seems to be a much mm -hmm. older one but it is good to uh, pretty much it connects uh this area and uh haven it's a it's a map between the two areas before I roll that one up, I'm mm -hmm. going to look south. Can I locate the watchtower on it? Uh, you can. It's a much older version. You can tell because there's a few other things. 
excuse me, a few other things around the watchtower that you guys clearly didn't see, uh, but you are able to see the, where the watchtower is. Is there anything due south? Uh, let me look real quick. Uh, uh, due south is not a whole lot. Uh, there obviously is the verdant canopy. Actually, let me bring you guys over to the world map real quick. There we go. Uh, there's the Verant Canopy all the way down south, which, uh, connects this land to Gar Wastes, uh, but directly south from you guys, uh, is, like, water holes, small forests, you know, there's a couple of towns dotted around the area, there's one over here, uh, that's connected to the coastline, but those tend to be, they tend to move around a lot. Uh, on the map itself, it seems like it, it this, uh, area down here, um, which is kind of on like the very edge of the map essentially um it doesn't have an area even though you know there is one so it's definitely a lot older than that uh there is a there is a spot right here uh that is called like the 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 meeting grove for some reason um on the map there is no other descriptions on there aside from that but that's the only thing south that you you can see okay uh ania will turn to the others and speak up this map is of the area it's a bit of an old map but if the one who escaped went south maybe he is going to some place on this map there's uh, not really a lot due south though hmm and she'll let everyone else look at the map mm -hmm. <clears throat> it'd be interesting though would be a good way to go and find them might be worth might be worth it, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? By you the guys way, who's taking do... this ring? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> who's taking Pick this ring? That plus one to AC, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, it's a plus one to AC and all saving throws. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. We got some things. So we have a journal that's full of wizard spells. I don't know if we're ever going to really use that. We got three scrolls, a ring, and a cloak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a dagger. Well, oh, and then I mean... the fancy dagger. Right, right. I'm not going to lie. I feel a tad sheepish about leaving you three up there. Without any protection. Yeah, the 14 AC or the 15 or the 16 isn't exactly bringing me confidence <laughs> or leaving me very safe. So, uh, Ania yeah. is not raising her hand for it. <laughs> I mean, she is going back to the trunk, uh, the stump after she rolls up the map and puts it away. Nice. Yeah. Understand. I missed. You want the. Do you want the ring? Uh, gesturing to Ania. Ania will look back like, I mean, I already got all these books and stuff. Well, true, but you did get a little, uh, scraped up during the, the last fight. And I, I, I'm, I can ahead. dodge out of the way of most things, but. Ania will seem a little bit uncomfortable with it. And then she'll perk up and say, Oh, once I, once I identify these, um, or maybe you can help me, Dakota, to identify these scrolls, we can pass them out. And then I would feel more comfortable taking the ring. Sure, why not? I mean, and... it's mostly, a uh, necromancy, necrotic darkness stuff, and that's, well, that's uh, in the book. kind of my gist. Yeah, oh, Maybe right. the scrolls are different. Right, yeah. Hopefully. Yep. yep. <laughs> Ania will... They're all just yeah, different it's... versions of Animate Dead. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I hate them! Let's burn them all! Okay, Ania will hesitantly accept the ring. Animate she... hamster? Animate dog? <laughs> animate dragon? Holy crap! <laughs> Hamster specifically named with Hamtaro? What? 
<laughs> the ham hams. What have they done to you? <laughs> this scroll is just a 12 DVD block set of ham taro ham ham heartbreak. <laughs> oh, wait, she'll actually pause. Uh, oh. Is the ring metal? Uh, that's a good question. Um, hold on, I have to, I have to think about it in my head. I, it, it would certainly be um, a type of metal. Know. Off of uh, Gelmar's comment, she would probably already know that Gelmar can identify basic metal types. Mm -hmm. If that's a concern. Mm -hmm. What'd you say, uh, Sin? Uh, it would be probably a type of metal, although what metal mm -hmm. it would be, uh, you're not sure. Um, I believe jewelry metal uh, still counts as proper metal, right? If I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ania will technically. Jewelry, probably. Mm -hmm. It's just a precious metal more than anything. Yeah. Yeah, technically the druid thing is only against armor, but mm -hmm. me and Sinari talked about it, and like druids will accept other druids to wear like metal rings and stuff, but they'll like do a frowny face. <laughs> yeah. So Ania will like start to take the ring, then pause and be like Druids aren't really comfortable wearing metal objects. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Um, no need, I'll wear it, uh, then, if you'd prefer that. Mm-hmm. Maybe in the future if I get more comfortable with it. But yeah. for now, I would rather not. Yeah, no problem, Liz. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. just settled. Mm -hmm. Gelmar's just, like, over in the corner looking up and down the leather armor. With a bit of hint of extra metal, one could probably make this studded. Mm. You do, as a, as for shaking his head, just walking over to the other her uh, weapons, shields, and uh, rusted scale mail. She's like, "Does anyone desire these? I'd be more than happy to make them into a few ingots later, or if no one does." I only like really, really heavy armor. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one's not heavy enough. Looks over at the scale mail. <laughs> is it heavier than what I have? I don't think. Uh, scale mail is typically like uh, uh, scale mail is a heavy armor. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty no. sure. I got chain mail. I have chain mail. Yeah. Uh, technically, scale mail is considered medium armor, specifically in uh, I believe it's in five years. Well, I'm not sure if it's on. Is All the way up to half plate heavy? is considered medium armor. Yeah, it, it's relatively heavy, uh, but it is considered medium armor. Um, weirdly enough, but yeah, it would be. Where's Rue? Rue is eighteen. Starts at sixteen. It, it would be about as tough as yeah. her armor at the moment. But you could use a lot of its metal, specifically the scales on it, to make uh, uh, studded leather armor, uh, which I believe Dakota... Oh no, Dakota already studded has some. Le studded leather is light armor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both Dakota and Sapphire both have, have studded leather. <laughs> and Nia, but her studs are made out of bone, I think. Good oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rue just like, looks at the tower shield. If you just maybe could take the tower shield and slap that onto the scale mail. That would work so good. <laughs> I'm just like staring at just like, I mean, perhaps, but it would, seems like it would be so, so much extra weight for so a little extra uh, protection. Or so, a I could extra have extra two cover. tower shields for one. <laughs> She's oh, like thinking about it with stars in her eyes. She's like, two tower shields, one in front and one on the back. <laughs> I Fucking think you would terrible. like me to see about uh, oh, reforging sure. the S for you then? And he just uh, is picking it up. Very uh, nice. Rube would like so? to be a turtle. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am a turtle. Fair enough. <laughs> we we'll probably need most of the rest of this metal for that project alone. Hmm? Muttering something under his breath. Before <laughs> proceeding to put all the equipment into the empty pockets of his pack. Nice, nice. <laughs> Why don't we just use the shield as a sled? You could fit more on it and you could just drag it up the stairs. If you want to use it as a sled, I could just as well 
and have this thing rounded out at the front. It's not that hard with a few good swings from a mallet. It's fair. And Neo will hmm? start to go upstairs just to check on the weather, but she's not okay. going to go far. Oh, so you, you kind of... What's up? I'm talking to uh, Gelmar. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Neo yeah, kind of walks outside for a moment. Um, I'll get to that in just a second, sorry. Uh, but Neo walks <clears throat> outside the doors for just a second, and the rain has only increased. It's now just absolutely pouring. It's starting to flood down the stairs just a little bit uh, into the room that you were just in. Uh, not a whole lot is coming down the stairs, but it, it's definitely like it, it's raining more than the ground can absorb. Essentially, I would have just assumed that they'd form or carve like a channel at the bottom of this to guide the water further inward mm -hmm. in the in the stones. Uh, and what you're saying to to go to or to Gamor Cyril? Well, he was talking about uh, <clears throat> pounding the uh, one of the edges of the tower shield round so that it would slide up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying, if you feel that's necessary to get it up the stairs. Oh no, I'm fairly certain I could carry all of it as, as it is, if that's a concern. Above game, I actually did already do the calculation. I have enough carrying capacity to hold every single item that Sin is listed here as the right in them stuff. God damn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking ties it with fucking rope, slaps it on his shoulder, just like, all right. <laughs> Fighters, <laughs> Two my thumbs friends. up from room. Yeah. Just, Two just, thumbs just up hold from on room. a second, and he twangs, the, twangs whatever rope he's using to hold it on his back. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Billy says with a smile. Before we proceed to start our going. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's you guys are going to head back up. Team. Yep. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, Nia, you would you would definitely see the 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 pretty much like maybe inch or two of water that's just sitting on the ground first, um, as everyone's starting to get kind of ready to get out. Uh, I just, would you look around for a channel like Galmar would, or uh, so like a place the water is draining into? It would be draining into, yeah. Uh. I'm not sure why I would. I'm just checking on the weather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, the weather is, is, is just getting worse. <laughs> is it localized? Can I see there's like no clouds past a certain distance? Uh, you are in the building still, so you can't tell. Oh, okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. When you were outside with uh, Sapphire, uh, it was as far as the distance could see. Okay. No problem. Yep, yep. All right. So you guys start making your way back up uh, the stairs, back up uh, all the way to the middle space here, where you guys are sitting here at the moment. The You guys can hear the rain outside is just blasting downwards. There's thunder rolling uh, for what it sounds like miles. Um, the, the area is just flooding. Um... It seems like it's being focused on that middle channel that you guys just got out of. Um, so it doesn't seem like, you know, it would take a lot of water to fill that area, which is good. Um, so down here is relatively dry, at least, uh, especially as you guys get closer to the, the sides of the building where the entrance is and stuff. Um, that's pretty much dry. Outside, though, is just Storm in a way. Oh, uh, so in addition to everything that we got down there, I'm also dragging up one of the rugs. Nice. <laughs> I was just going to use it as a uh, bedroll at this point. Yeah, very, very fair. It's, uh, it's, it's very, it's very filled with water and muck, but you could absolutely dry out. I could shake it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys kind of get to the main floor. Wait, wait, what are you guys doing now? I think we should find a place to rest. Agreed. I 
don't suspect that that storm's going to be lighting up any soon, or anytime soon. Just like looks over <laughs> at the gap underneath the stairs. He was he opens his mouth as if he's about to suggest that location, then remembers the spider. It's just like what is that? <laughs> hang over the overhang over there, just uh, as looking across the bridge. <laughs> Okay. I suppose any spot is as, I suppose one spot is as good as any. Mm -hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. um, Ania is going to cast Druidcraft again. Mm -hmm. Druidcraft allows me to create a, a tiny harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be at your location for the next 24 hours. Nice. The effect uh, could manifest as a golden orb for clear skies, a cloud for rain, falling snowflakes for snow, and so on. It only persists for a round. So she's going to like hold her staff in one hand in front of her and concentrate and a little orb will, like manifest. Mm -hmm. uh, inside of your hand in the little orb, uh, for the next 24 hours that you can see at least, uh, it is more than just a rain cloud it's rain cloud with just a flood underneath it basically it just it looks like it's constant rain though you do notice the uh the lightning that appears uh only appears for a very short period of time and then fades so mm -hmm. probably the lightning storm will fade after a couple hours but the rain is just don't keep chucking along for a long time okay the rain's gonna stay on this location for Pretty much the whole next day, perhaps. The thunderstorm should clear up, though. I don't know if it'll be safe here to be here if it's going to rain that much, but I don't know where else we could go. We stayed together this long. I'd imagine so. Unless you hear an unnerving creaking, they'll probably stand for us as well. Mm hmm. I agree. The whole, the whole top part did collapse today. Well, I mean... At the force of an un unrelated in individual, yes, but... Perhaps the rest of our enemies will be those little spiders I see over there. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right. Oh, spiders don't like water very much either. They'll probably hide out. Mm -hmm. I oh, think I'll just I like think a... I'll sleep under the overhead. I think I'll sleep under the hole in the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm just gonna start breaking the the halves off of this uh, the the like rotten wood from the halves off of the spears. Mm -hmm. Make a little campfire and shove a lit torch into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. This way we oh. have some kind of warmth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you kind of I'm assuming you do it over on the the left side here across the bridge. Yeah, yeah, like over okay. where we're setting up camp. Okay, okay. Let me just. I guess while everyone. Say. There we go. I guess while he's working on that, I'm just going to grab probably one of the stray, likely fallen out of place bricks, on the mm -hmm. floor and just start uh, carving a sigil into it. So it's not nice. one. It's one you've seen him carve several times before, but it doesn't look like a casting sigil. Mm. Okay. So you you start carving it. Uh, the fire starts pretty much kind of getting pretty large. Since you're under the overhang, the the rain just simply can't get to you. It stops several feet before uh even the edge of the fire could even be touched. So the fire is is nice and big, and it's pretty damn warm too. Um, especially considering you guys have pretty much just been in the cold for like probably several hours now, and your clothes have all been drenched too. Uh, on top of the various zombie liquids that probably got onto you guys as well at some point or another so the fire is a very welcome uh, and, and, and peaceful kind of feeling that, that yeah. hits y'all um what is this? Ooh, that's pretty um but yeah so the uh the fire's warmth kind of hits you starts to dry your clothes just a little bit um i'm assuming you're all setting up camp at this point Mm -hmm. Oh, speak of yeah. the devil, that is a thunder. I thunder. Uh oh. Yeah, I just heard that too. 
Is that Pleasanter over there? Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I was looking out the window and I caught a couple of bolts coming down out in the distance. Just like, huh, I wonder if that's gonna get over here. (laughs) The fucking, uh, the ambiance is real tonight. Oh yeah, you're calling it upon yourself. I know, right? Um, but yeah, so I'm assuming you're all, um, kind of gathering your your equipment and placing down bedrolls and setting up tents mm-hmm. and stuff. Yes. As best yes. as we can between the stones. Oh well I've got plenty of pittance. Fair. Hmm. Fair. <laughs> Anil will find will try to find any like dry spot that has like moss and stuff and sit up there. Plants. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like my plants. Plants. Okay. So you all set up uh, all of your bedrolls or, you know, moss locations are all set up. The uh, the rug that Gelmore drug up is still kind of moist, but the fire is doing a good job at uh, 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 kind of getting a lot of the moisture out. So it's 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 very nice rug. It's very well made. Uh, it just was years of being soaked. And um, yeah, you're all just kind of circled around the campfire. Uh, the fire is just kind of hitting all of you with a nice gentle glow and gentle thing. The sounds of the thunder rolling on by is, is peaceful, uh, albeit slightly terrifying considering your location. Um, and the <laughs> rain is just, it seems to be going as hard as it's going to be, uh, but it's just a non-stop constant uh, flow downwards. Hmm. Um, there was a series of mm-hmm. middling decisions. Middling. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are your middling decisions? I feel we wait. I feel that I wasted time. I wasted yours and my time on a goose chase out in the out in the town. Oh, that's right. What did you learn? We we learned who the we we learned about the local messenger in town. Right, there was that <laughs> one. Was he the one who <laughs> issued the quest? No. No. It would seem that no one issued this quest. Strange. Wait, you don't think they issued the quest? He says, pulling out the cloak. I don't know. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. If they were doing something here, why would they bring the whole Haven's inspection onto it? Maybe they weren't expecting the whole haven. Well, I mean, we're not Maybe the whole they haven. All but... these. Hmm. Mm. There wasn't a lot of equipment set up here, but I don't know much about necromancers. Maybe they didn't need much. I wonder I if they did the same thing with the other bandits that, or the other adventurers that had supposedly been paid off before by the bandits. Right, we did learn that too. There was a bit of a uh, problem group that had come through and made a deal with the local bandits. I think that's what put the bad taste in everyone's mouth for uh, adventurers. Right, the news. It would explain a few things. Just wish we could have at least dragged one of of the individuals back, so at the very least prove that we are are on their side. And he will make a very big frowny face at the whole bandits paying adventures. Uh, She will turn to Gelmar then, like, You said you did recognize the sigil. Could you tell us more about who these people might be? Unfortunately, I can't say I know much, much beyond and what I've already told you. <sighs> I've had one previous run-in with this organization, 
Don't even know their name, to be honest with you. Last time I saw them, they were dragging off my sister, out of all things. Mm. Oh, goodness. I suppose you could say that was how I wound up finding my way to the Haven. I'm trying to figure out where they've gone since. That is why I was as important that he stay alive as, a, as it, anything was. He was the only hint I had as to where they could have gone from here. Will they still have her? I hope. Or mm. I can't decide if it'd be better if they did or did not. Last saw her yeah. a little last saw her around a year ago. Hmm. My condolences. Thank you. He said as looking before trying to get back to his carving. Ania will give a slight told you so like look at Cyril. He wasn't going to tell us anything. There are more means of doing of getting information than simply torture and insults. I have never tortured. I have only met out justice. <laughs> Kidnappers, drug dealers, all manner of all manner of crimes that go above and beyond what the local courts should handle. I simply take care of it. Perhaps, but from what I have been told, the act of taking justice into one's own hands is how oh, a fair few who additional murder or that later was found to be unnecessary happened, if you'll forgive if my bluntness. Mm. Perhaps I have made some mistakes. I've had many years to do so. But we all we all make them occasionally. And the best we can really but do I feel I've made I feel I've made just as many, if not more, right decisions on the on that front. Well, I suppose the confidence is a health and a healthy level of confidence is how huh? always help. Just Above game, I am failing with conversations again, <laughs> as you can tell. Nah, you're I, good. Suppose, I suppose a bit of confidence is healthy, and I'd imagine, and probably more things would have gone wrong. I had you not I've taken a few who liberties here and there. So, Certainly a few liberties. Still, he said, has finishing the carving. Sometimes it does feel a little bit better to, at the very, very least, Oh, at the very least, have some sort of indication, or at least hold on to the hope that, that you still manage to keep with us within, if you understand. And he said, as before proceeding to put away his tools, actually taking a prayer stance in front of the sigil he just marked. Ooh. Mm. What is that sigil that you keep making every night? Um, a buff game. He doesn't actually make it every night. He just specifically makes it when, and they get back from a quest and where they end up killing somebody. I suppose you could say it's an old tradition to pay their respects to the lost. In a manner of speaking, it's to help help maintain sanity. It's my personal method. He says. Hmm. Oh, I see. I also wasn't against what we had done as well. Looking at it for myself, my family is farmers, yes? They, we have problems with coyotes as well as our neighbors. These coyotes will come and they will devour our hens and our sheep because they know that the farmers will always buy more flock to be able to keep up their produce. If you don't do anything about the coyotes, then you're not protecting your flock. I'm not saying to go out and slaughter all the coyotes that you see in the world, but that if you don't do anything to protect what you have, then you're not protecting someone else as well. Very true and very wise, but still, Every life you take 
It's just another chip taken out of your, your psyche and another a slit in your a value and respect of life itself. This is part of the reason I do this tradition, to further remind myself what has been lost through all these activities. And I think that is a good thing. I agree. I appreciate the gesture. There he's uh, standing up. Ah. Still, it's been a long day, I'd imagine. And just about everyone else is uh, a little bit more winded at the moment. <laughs> Shall see if we can get some sleep with all this magical rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't suppose oh. we're likely to find any better instances. Mm. He's a, a, a unrolling the carpet and proceeding to lay down on top of it. Surprisingly, you see him unstrap all of the equipment in front that he's brought up from the below stair from below the stairs, as well as take off his pack. But he leaves everything else on, including his armor. Ruble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rubles keep sitting up. Um, by the fire and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fine with keeping watch first. Wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm more than happy to light up a few torches and then keep watch around the doorways and the windows. I will keep says, watch with you. <laughs> I'll that, keep sir? watch with you, Rue. Nice. Much thanks. Good company. <laughs> Put an odds propping himself up against the uh, the wall, his hat tipped over his eyes. Okay. Sapphire is going yeah. to find a place to rest, too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep. Ania will uh, sit in her corner, and she's going to just stay up a little bit to try and decipher the scrolls, since everyone else is going to bed. Uh, she okay. will probably go to bed after she tries, though. Okie dokie. Nice, nice. Uh, Man, I was surprised we're getting a storm. It was like 90 degrees today. <laughs> I'm just hearing it like why a over my head. The, why do you have the rain and stuff? I got 80 <laughs> over here. Because we're on the brink of uh, fall coming along. Mm. And thunderstorms yeah. tend to be literally just hot and cold air crashing into each other. Uh, yeah. yeah, we had oh, like 90. I think we had 97 yesterday. We had 91 today. And uh, it says we have 87 tomorrow, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that the thunder might change that. <laughs> um, yes. but it's just really, really fun having it above. Oh, hi, Pocket. Got no sound. I can't stick around too long. Ah, no problem. Glad you're here. Um, yeah. Thank you for the typing story. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so you guys all start to kind of get tuckered in and, and start to kind of get some rest aside from Cyril and uh, Rue. Uh, the night is not going to have anything eventful happen, at least while you guys are awake. Uh, which order of uh, watch will you will you guys take? Uh, Galmar already offered to take part of the late night. And uh, Nia will probably somewhere in the middle. She's going to be reading first, so she's going to be the last to sleep out of the ones going to sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she will probably take one closer to morning, I assume. Normally when, like, this is just a Nia in general, when it's stormy out and there's no stars out, she tends to go to sleep earlier. Uh, when there is stars out, she will usually always take first to watch, but if it's cloudy, she doesn't care. <laughs> fair, fair. Okay. Oh. Good job, Pocket. Okay. Uh, Dakota? Um. I... Oh, I will do that. I'm trying. I'm trying to wrap my head around how this works specifically. So uh, just wait. like three shifts, basically. More or less. Like you guys are kind of like um, whoever is staying four, awake. Yeah. yeah, you guys will usually stay awake for about an hour or two. Um, so about four shifts in total. 
uh, obviously Cyril and uh, Rue are going to take the first shift, and then you guys kind of split up however you guys really wish to. Uh, if Aenea's taking probably the last uh, shift, roughly, and then... Uh, I think Gilmar... Hmm? Uh, was Gilmar going to take the last shift? Uh, I was going to take late into the night shift. Okay. Do you guys... Uh, I mean, uh, D Dakota's definitely willing to. I'm just trying. I'm not sure when. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> oh, there's Cyril. Hi, Cyril. Dakota can. Yeah, I mean, you could probably just do like. Uh, you could probably take last watch, and I mean, I can't remember. I can't remember if Gil if Gelmar actually said that. He wanted last watch, or if he... Uh, he just said that he was going to light up some torches and keep an eye on the windows and doors. Mm -hmm. oh. So probably later in the night. So probably it would be uh, uh, yes. Rue and Cyril, uh, followed by... My assumption would be Sapphire, and then uh, probably Ania, Galmar... And or Ania Dakota Galmar. Technically yeah. speaking, there you only need four watches for a, a long rest. Oh, die point five. I have no idea. I wasn't paying that close attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. No, that sounds about right. No, right. that's well. Who is together? Because like, they're not all separate, or else it would be five. Yeah, there uh, has to be another. Pair Rue up. and Cyril are together, and then. Yeah, there'd be four left. So honestly, Galmore and Nia could take the same shift. Okay. That'll work. So oh, Rue sorry. and Cyril, followed by Sapphire, then Ania and Galmore, and then Dakota last. Mm -hmm. That sound right? Yeah. Sounds good. Cool, cool. Shine by me. All right. And so the people who are going to be sleeping first sounds like it would be Sapphire. Uh, followed by, uh, on, <laughs> trying to think of who would be next. Probably, I would want to say, like, what, Dakota would be second yeah. sleep? Oh, all right, okay. Because I'm trying to think, because Rue and right, Cyril... Dakota's, you said Dakota's going after me, so, yeah. yeah. Rue and Cyril would technically be the last to be asleep. Oh, wait, no. No, I don't no. know. No, because I would be the last. I go on watch. They can go on yeah. to sleep. So it's like, yeah. yeah so it'd be Sapphire, Dakota, uh, Gelmar, and then Rue, Cyril, and Ania, or okay. Cyril Rue. Depends on which one you guys yeah, want to sleep first. Yeah, Cyril and Rue would be the last because they're taking the first party. watch, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it depends on if you want to stay awake until after they fall asleep, or if you want to sleep before they. I'm already looking at one. One thing to hear. Are you looking at one? Probably, this way. probably best for like the other <laughs> four to, to get to to go to sleep now while oh, when the first the watch is up. Mm -hmm. so, I'm a okay. One. I'm a beanie character. 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 Sapphire, we can hear you. Happy. Happy. Just a second. I'm gotta <laughs> unmute myself. Good no problem. Well, you know what? I mean, I'm a mu I'm muted. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, so many people talk to me. Oh, you're no fine. Problem. <laughs> but yeah, so in that case, it would be Sapphire first, and then uh, Dakota, uh, Galmar, Ania, Rue, and Cyril. Okay. Or Cyril mm -hmm. and Rue, depending on, again, which one you guys want to sleep first. Coin flip. Queen Flippies. I'll be, I'll be real. You probably want to save my dream for after my watch, considering just like if I'm taking second, that means that I'm going to be asleep for longest afterwards. Oh, that's Somewhere. true. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. In that case, I'll put Galmore after. Uh, Cyril and Rue, which one of you want to sleep first? The soda stain. The soda stain. Uh, Cyril first. I push him. <laughs> All right, fair. Well, there we go. <laughs> so it'll be in order of sleepies for dream sequences. It'll be Sapphire, Dakota, 
Ru- uh, De- Sapphire, Dakota, Cyril, Rue, Gelmar, uh, fuck, Han. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my, my, my shit, this is Sapphire why I talk. This is why I talk out. Yeah. Sapphire, Saf- Sapphire, Dakota, Ania, Cyril, Gelmar. Rue, Gelmar. Okay, I have Gelmar's last. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whew, I have that's it written why. down now. You can't change it you anymore. Want to sit down? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I, I, I appreciate that greatly. <laughs> oh, why are you standing up again? Okay. Oh, uh, down, please. Thank you. Yeah, that should work. Yes. Let me. No. Yeah. That's sharp. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, that's sharp. <laughs> I <just hate> that. <laughs> yes, you should. My daughter just tried to wrap her whole hand around a saw. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah, but you that, can't that learn carpentry like until you're after a year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah, we'll start with Sapphire in that case. So, you all slowly get into your beds. You all start uh, kind of drifting off. As time goes on uh, and you guys switch out shifts, you start moving. Galmar doesn't sleep necessarily, he's just kind of resting for the first part of uh, the time. Uh, after he's done with his shift, he, he's pretty much exhausted, goes and properly sleeps. That's why he's going to be at the end. Um, for, for for the first bit, you know, you, you're resting, of course, but sleep just doesn't quite take you. Um, but you guys rotate, you guys move around, um, and you guys get uh, A, your full rests, B, all of your stuff from your levels, uh, and C, you guys get all of your health back as well. Um, as you guys are all laying down, resting, and, and sleep starts taking yeah, most of you. Um, yeah, Sapphire away. is the yeah. first one for sleep to properly take her. Uh, and as she drifts into her sleep, uh, Sapphire, you wake up in a weird way. You don't wake up in the room. Instead, you wake up here. Uh, I assume that moved over properly. Yes, yes, it did. Cool. You wake up here. This is a beautiful location. It's absolutely amazing. Is filled with mementos to the moon. The moon is massive behind this uh, large uh, stone pillar, which seems to almost have a mini moon inside of it for some reason or another. The area around you feels like a temple. If it's a very familiar place, and yet somewhere that you you swear you've never been. Um, you recognize some of the, the the creatures around you, but you couldn't tell what they are. You just know you've seen them before many times, many times. They're almost like friends. They're they're very familiar creatures that that rest around, uh, just carved into stone. They're all fae. You recognize that greatly. Is that they are all fae creatures, and this is definitely not the material realm that you were used to. I should be this character, but younger. Uh, instead, you are seeing the archway encapsulizing the moon around you. You wake up in this area, you look around, and is there anything you, you, you do as you are looking around specifically? Or are you just figuring out what's around you? Um, well, my first question is, is my skin sparkling? Yes. Okay, so it's real moonlight? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Hello. I don't know. Like, I guess I would just walk up to that. I, I, would that be like an altar or something? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Altar. The, the work. second moon thing you were talking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up slowly, so I get uh, also looking around at everything. Okay. As you walk up to it, uh, you feel a presence, uh, kind of, I suppose, uh, morphing into existence next to you. Uh, it's a pre- presence that you you immediately recognize as someone who is very important to you. You could not say their name it escapes you. You don't remember what they look like. That also escapes you. But as they start to materialize next to you. You you turn your head uh, and you see the... Oops, sorry, I forgot. That mutes me. Uh, you see the moon inside the altar 
uh kind of disappear for a second and like pulls itself from the from the altar into a shape next to you i post it in the campaign chat there is a woman standing there she is very she's a humanoid her hands seem to have some weird shadow effect to them uh with some you you can't really make out what is there you can kind of see digits but you're not quite sure her legs are even more of a of a shadowy form she is wearing a very nice uh bright white sundress with a nice white uh hat a uh, sun hat and in her eyes you can see a galaxy the the sundress that she is wearing the only decal on it is the very edges are all black and then there is the um phases of the moon printed all around the uh um the sundress and you do recognize her she is uh a fey creature but you don't know anything about her all you know is that she is important to you somehow you can feel it instinctively in right. your soul okay um, i ask her who she is <laughs> she she smiles at you and you can tell it's oh, such a sad smile you know her. it's oh. such a unbelievably just not quite hurt smile but it's one that you would do if you looked at like your closest friend and they lost their memories or something it's it's just a brutal look um but she looks at you with the the, the softest of smiles and she's like ah right hello um I am the moon. Did you hear me, Sever? Yes, I heard you. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what to say next. Fair. It's been a long time since I have seen you. Probably. I can't remember. No, you wouldn't. You, uh... We, we had to make sure you didn't a long time ago. Why? Let's just say you have to make some choices in the future. And if you remembered why, you would be biased towards those choices. And we need... We need to know who's right and who's wrong. So we need an unbiased focus. Like your daddy. Okay then. <laughs> what am I doing here? I thought it'd be now. time to see you again. It has been quite a while. Are you relatives? <laughs> uh, sorry i'm i'm at a friend's house so oh you're good so um her husband um <laughs> lived for the longest time with um bear yeah, she's like you are an important piece to the puzzle that we have in front of us and well you are aware i'm not sure how many memories we have taken from you, unfortunately. But you are aware that you are a Feylander? I'd be a yes, right? Yeah. You're technically not from the Fey, but having been imbued with so much Fey magic, you would con be considered a Fey creature at this point. Cool. Okay, yeah. Well, the Fey land is in danger. We don't know what from, exactly. We don't know what is... <laughs> we don't know what is 
interacting with the Fey world. But the Fey Wild is <sighs> she like takes some moments to kind of like look up at the the larger moon to kind of like take a moment to breathe and she looks up at it and a lot of things seem to be swirling through her mind. There's a lot of dangers that are arising, and we're not sure how to interact with it. The queen, she has her hands full of a lot of different troubles that we're having. The Shadow Realm is encroaching upon us. They are connecting with us in ways that we do not quite know how to deal with. So we need you to wander. You've been given the ability to cross with the Fae, to be the guiding herald of the Fae. When you made that deal with me so very long ago, that is the connection you sought and seeked and gotten. The Fae are in need of help. And we are not easily ones who seek out help. It's been a long, long time. She kind of looks up at the moon again, kind of staring into it. She's very graceful with all of her movements, but they're all slow. They all flow, almost like the water in the sea. We don't know the troubles that are ahead of us, but they are dangerous. And you must make choices, and you must make them soon. You need to be wary of creatures that you meet. Are the pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Do you know much of the Fey Wild, child? <laughs> Only that my skin sparkles in the moonlight now because of being, having been in it. No, I cannot remember my time in the Fey Wilds. Ah, that would be a gift from me. You made, you made a deal with me a long time ago, seeking something, and in exchange for my power, we have sought upon you to be a champion for us to some degree. The deal of... The, the details of the deal were that I bestow power upon you and the moon shines its light upon those you favor and you wander and protect our lands. That's a table. It's a bit outside. How do I protect the land without remembering the land? <laughs> Did you need a jacket? That is unfortunately <laughs> the biggest difficulty that we're encountering. If you know the issues that are arising, well, we don't know which side is right. Ours or theirs. We don't know who's in the right and who's in the wrong. Ultimately, it won't matter too much to me. Me and few other primordial forces don't really get interacted by the Fey Wild and lands, but there is something playing behind the scenes, something weaving. The realm itself is in danger, and we don't know why. Nothing should have the power to weave the cosmos itself between one another, and yet something is. So I want to bring you here to... I suppose just see an old friend again, and to help unlock a bit of your potential. You've done very well so far. You've utilized your power to... A great extent, we do watch over you. Every night that the moon shines upon you is a night that I get to see your face. So if you will allow, I would like to 
unlock that which you can achieve. You are young. But I think you can become everything we need you to be. If you are willing to take it. Okay. I'm okay. I'm willing. She she has a bright smile on her face as she looks at you. Uh, it is slightly uncomfortable uh, looking at that smile, at least in, in your, your back of your mind, you know. It's not something that happens very often. You don't see this creature smile very much. So it's a very odd feeling seeing her smile. But... She smiles and she raises one of her one of her hands and the shadowy forms of her her fingers gently places itself upon your shoulder and then she slowly gives you a hug and you can feel as she does so magic radiates through your body it it flows through you like almost as if you are just being hit by a river essentially. It pours into you, and for a moment, you swear you can feel the f very fabric of the universe itself ebbing and flowing through every cell in your body. And you can see your, your skin starts to shimmer just a little bit more, just a little bit brighter. And uh, she, she steps back for a second and nods to you. She's like, fantastic. You've taken to that very well. You should now be able to use our, well, fey powers. One of them is to be able to teleport at your will. You can only go a short distance, of course. And it does take up quite a bit of your, your energy, but you can regenerate the energy as time goes on. But you have done very well. There is some more for you to do. I will come back another day. I feel like your journey has just begun, and you have so much left to explore and wander. Your party members are very interesting, very special that I can see. I think they will do wonders as well. Several of them have been chosen by others, and it is fascinating to see. Do you have any questions for me, little one? I don't think a lot of Nothing to be answered right now. All right. In that case, you will have a wonderful slumber, a wonderful sleep, and you will awaken well rested. Be sure to hone your powers, hone your abilities, explore and wonder how you use them, for that which is not used is often rested. But in the meantime, I will see you another night, my friend. And slowly, the world just you kind of fades. Huh? What, what was that? Early bright when he's wasn't me, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the world just kind of slowly fades as, as you close your eyes. And you go into a pseudo-dream uh, state. Uh, it's that that... that darkness that you just kind of slip into and eventually you wake up feeling as she said well rested and well done uh who was the second person uh dakota if i recall right right yep right, that's what right. i wrote down thank you that is what you see dakota <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in almost pitch black darkness <laughs> the world around you you cannot see more than your hand away from your face, but you can feel under you ripples of a wave. The world around you is an ocean, it is a sea of darkness, and you can feel the ground, the, the waves, the ocean underneath you is not water. It's more of an inky tar. And as you step around onto it, it sticks to your feet, almost practically begging to pull you under. Ah, uh, pity. I almost forgot about this place. After just a moment of, of waiting, you, uh, you see a small flash of light. 
and standing before you, slightly larger than you, looking down at you, is a humanoid clad in silver armor with long sword at his side. Darkness seems to ripple off his body like a mist, shrouding most of the features around him aside from the sheer gleam of much of the silver that he is encapsulated by. And he looks down at you, and even through the solid helmet that, that he has uh, on top of you, uh, on top of him, uh, he has it for a moment is a old knight's helmet and he slowly takes it off and again darkness just flows out of this helmet before he puts it to his side and disappears and uh he looks down at you and you can see through the darkness through the mist a look of absolute pure disdain is a look that is one of the most hurtful things that you you always forget he has it until he looks at you and his eyes just his eyes can tell you that he wants nothing more than your soul to be splayed out in front of him it's been a long time hasn't it here Indeed. i thought you'd up and left me <laughs> uh. I have need of you still. Leaving you would be pointless. You were gone for, what, six months? I had nothing I need you to do. Now I mm. do. They're always, it's always something, isn't it? Indeed. One of your kind always needs something to do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> you, uh, it's not one of them, is it? Not no. one of them. Okay. All right. Your teammates have no interest to me yet. Mm hmm. But I... there's something? What Indeed. is it? Indeed. Cyril? Rue? No. There's a new job for you, a new hunt, a new contract. Oh. All right. Who I got to shoot this time? <laughs> Inside the Elysian Glade, there is an elder tree. It's one of the largest and most ancient in the entire forest. I'm sure you've seen it. You want me to shoot a tree? That's <laughs> no, a new one. No, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Inside of that tree, down beneath it, some kind of creature from the Shadow Realm seeks entrance. Your petty squabbles between you and your teammates means nothing to me. They all mean nothing to me. But if a creature decides to seek entrance into my fucking plane, I expect you to deal with it. Your plane? This yes. is... I forgot. Remind me what this place is supposed to be again. This is the Shadow Realm. My plane is the material plane, is where those which seek to naturally come about are. Creatures like you don't deserve to even live there, and yet you do, so I'll put you to good use. Creatures from this realm have even less of a place there. They don't even follow the same goddamn laws of physics. All right, then. disgusting. Down there, underneath that tree, they're using it as a power source. Think of it like, oh, you know, like a magic sphere that you're generating mana from, using its very life force in order to create. Well, not create crack a portal through reality to connect the planes together and seek entrance into our <laughs> my realm and unfortunately those sickening snake creatures are helping them snake creatures yes the yanti abominations to the highest regard they sought the power of a deity and the deity well, change them. 
Now they mm. think they're perfect. Your bullets should be suffice to prove them wrong. Alright. Do I just shoot up them all? <laughs> Anything that's down there that isn't natural should stop being alive. If they go back to their plane, fine and dandy. If the Yonti decide to journey with them to this hellscape, even better. Alright. If you insist, then. Indeed. I'll shoot up everything in the tree. Hmm. Hmm. Now then, as you are currently... You would die, as a remiss as I am to change that factor. And I still have need of you. He kind of raises one, one gauntlet for a second before snapping his fingers really hard. And there's an echo that booms through the, uh, through the area. And as it booms through the area, it seems to boom outwards before imploding back towards you and slamming into you from all directions. <laughs> Ugh. Hurts every time. Indeed. Uh, you should have more power, but should you choose to waste it or your talents, another will find you. You know this. I know. Good. Now be gone, child. And he snaps his finger again, and the darkness... You, you pretty much get pulled under into the inky sea before you, you snap awake. Never sticks around for a chat, huh? <laughs> uh, who's the next on my list? It is me! Hey! Oh my God. I like that. Whole switch of tone. <laughs> Yay! Um, Back to happy. Bats and ravens get swapped out for her sunshine and roses. <laughs> yep, that's gonna be a very interesting tone switch. So, um, you like the others. You you slowly open your eyes, but unlike the others, you are not in any specific location. Instead. You see the universe itself around you. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> As you open up your eyes, you're standing on nothing. You're standing on pure air. It takes you a moment to adjust. But you look around, and uh, I actually wrote a whole description. Uh, you recognize this as the infamous astral plane. An area that you have almost no knowledge of, because there is almost no knowledge of it, as no one has ever truly crossed over into it, at least none that often would be believed, it is a massive sea that has almost nothing inside of it, except for connectors between planes. This is the area that planes move into to cross into other planes. Uh, is more or less seas between continents, if every continent was a plane of existence. There's a purple haze filling the entire area as far as you can see from right in front of you to in the distant uh, distance. In, in the distance, as you look around, there is this massive, ungodly large tree. It looks absolutely, unfathomably huge, to you as you're looking at it, and you can tell just from where you are, you are nowhere near close to it. This thing is so large that you're not even sure if you can truly see all of it as you look around. The branches spread all across, they weave and cross into one another, they go almost all the way down to the base of the tree, as far down as that may be, and the base of the tree you can't even properly see. Uh, filling the sky around you are stars, tiny spheres of light that are moving in ways that you can honestly barely understand. As you look closer, the stars start to move together to form immense constellations. Several of them you do recognize. You recognize the Dragon Constellation, the Archer Constellation, the Phoenix Constellation, and many, many more, including a snowflake one. 
They move with a sense of life all on their own. And several of them you don't recognize. Several of them you're not even sure if could be seen from your plane itself. And the dragon moves to meet you. Um, so for my consciousness, mm -hmm. is this dream consciousness rules where I just accept like, oh yeah, this is where I am right now. <laughs> or am I like feeling like I woke up somewhere completely different? Uh, kind of mix of both. You feel like you just woke up, like you, you are awake. Um, you, you know, you're asleep. It's a weird a trans like you did with that previous trans uh, transition last time you had one of these prophecies where you woke up mm -hmm. in another area mm -hmm. you do feel awake you feel as if okay. you're feeling all this but you know for a fact it's a dream it's a weird okay. disconnect that you're you're kind of balancing in your head okay uh anio will say nothing Mm -hmm. uh, she will lift her head to look at the dragon, but she is slightly, like, panicky and, like, looking around, like, where am I? <laughs> the dragon flows down closer to you and kind of starts to, to circle around you. It's a massive, massive creature, easily hundreds of feet long, and that's all that you can see as well mm -hmm. as it kind of, like, circles around you. You do recognize some of this stuff from some of the stories that you have read before. One of the, the most well-known names that this sea goes by is the Graveyard of the Gods because it is where the energy of all deities and all beings uh, assumedly go when they die or fall in battle or something of that sort. And you do see around you are blocks and, and, and weird uh, monuments of sorts that, that seem very out of place. And it's just all around you, as far as you can see. Okay, uh, do I have my staff? You do. Okay, I'm clutching my staff, both hands tight to me. <laughs> and I'm not attempting to move or speak yet. I'm still <laughs> watching the dragon, looking around, and waiting. Right. Cool, cool. The dragon kind of pauses a little bit as it's moving around you um it still has the weird the like, constellation star movements and stuff within its body but its body seems to have stopped kind of in front of you as its tail seems to go in weird uh directions it's almost like that the end of it can't seem to hold a true form and it looks at you and you don't see it speak necessarily but you do hear it. It's almost as if it is talking and not talking at the same time. And it looks at you and it says, How are you here, being? I genuinely do not know. I hope I'm not intruding. No. We do not get many visitors in the sea. Most do not stay for very long. Who are you? And Ania will start to answer that, then stop and say, I'm afraid I'm still figuring that out. May I ask who you are? I am simply known as the dragon for now. I have changed in many millennia. Stars move, stars change, stars die. We always change. And the universe is he kind of pauses for a second disrupting the universe is disrupting 
Yes. You are a star creature. You speak to the stars, even on your plane. And she will give a nod and then elaborate, saying, I'm still in training. There are many druids on my plane who are far more skilled in such than I. Yes, but they don't listen the same. You seek curiosity. They seek answers. There are no answers, child. Have I been brought here, or have I ended up here? I do not know. I know your plane is being changed, weaved, controlled, moved. There is something in the water. No, oh, I'm sorry. I think my internet cut up something in the what? In the water. Ah, uh, in the water. And she'll at first look around herself to see if there's water around her. Uh, there is not. Through context, you probably assume since this is considered the sea uh, mm -hmm. by its statements and, you know, the astral sea, it probably means something in the sea, in, in the, the plane that you guys are in. Mm-hmm. Anil will stop to think about it and then nod and look back to the dragon and say, About a couple of years ago, I witnessed a snake moving through the constellations. Is that who you mean? Interesting. No. Roll me perception. Yeah! <laughs> Woo. be the one time I get a natural one. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm getting, what's going on. I jinxed it! Oh my god, a two. It's not a one. That is true. Uh, Nine is okay. Interesting enough, uh, the lower that roll was... Uh, the, the safer I'd be. No, actually. <laughs> The lower that roll was, the more dangerous for your eyes. <laughs> Ouch. You look around, and with a high perception, you would have kind of seen the stars as just the stars. You would have been able to conceptualize in your mind what you're seeing, more or less. As you're looking at this creature, the form of it starts to dissipate in your eyes it starts to separate it starts to to distance itself it's no longer looking like a dragon but instead a mist of of particles that are connecting larger star-like things together and then you look past it and past it and you look i would say to the left of the tree something catches your eye over there and for just a moment you swear you see a dragon not this dragon not a dragon constellation but a dragon a physical living breathing creature and you are hit with the most painful headache that you have ever felt in your entire life it feels like someone plucked out your eyeballs and then stabbed it with ice and iron and salt <laughs> is the most painful thing you've ever experienced in your life with no exception even the chomp through your shoulder did not feel even even close to as painful as that experience that you had it fades after just a moment and you look away from that site back to yeah. the dragon creature 
-hmm. but it was just a moment of raw unfiltered true agony mm -hmm. and he will like push like her palms into her eyes a second mm -hmm. and do a little bit of a cry of pain but she'll try to withstand and then like peer back at the uh, mist dragon and not mm -hmm. look that way <laughs> As you look back at the mist dragon, your eyes, like, it, they kind of refocus just a little bit, and you can see where its eyes and its face kind of are, but the rest of it is just gone from your sight, essentially. It mm -hmm. looks at you, and it just goes, You have seen. Perhaps. I'm not sure what I did, but it certainly hurts to look at. Yeah. It is weaving your universe in strange ways. The sea is made to separate the planes, to separate the, the worlds at large. They are not meant to be forged together, and yet it is. It is pulling together and is hurting the rules of nature. And Ania will think for a bit and keep like focus on the face to avoid looking anywhere that might injure her <laughs> again or hurt her again. Mm -hmm. mm, she'll be like, why are you telling me this? Your power is strong, child, but very young, very untapped. You are curious. You don't seek an answer. You seek a question. You don't seek the finalization. You seek the journey. Your kind the druids, you say. All of them are stunted, for their goal is not of nature's. Nature grows, nature changes, nature is ever-flowing. They are not. They seek one end one answer. You are not the first traveler who has come across this land, nor will you be the last. But to have gotten here, your power is untapped but vast. All creatures do have innate potential some higher than others. If you will allow me to do so, I wish to unlock your potential. And Ania will think on it and look at the dragon, and she has seen the dragon constellation a few times, even just when they were in Haven, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's very, very, it's one you can see almost throughout the entire year. It's usually seen as a protector of sorts uh, with, mm -hmm. the, with the label of monarch for the month. It's either a protector or a tyrant, depends on kind of the, the culture that, that you grew up with. Uh, for the druids, the dragon is almost always seen as the protector, the king, the one who rises above all and protects all below it. Um, that's the usual seeing or saying for most druids. Mm -hmm. And Ania will nod and then continue saying, I would be willing to accept. It slowly nods, and it reaches out a hand, very, very soft and gentle press against your forehead. It is a claw that is easily bigger than your entire body, 
by leagues is probably like around 20 feet tall is just this last knuckle of its claw but the very 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 tip of it it presses to your forehead and uh as it does so you can feel it's almost like the universe itself is speaking to you 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 can literally feel the the weave of the cosmos flowing through your body and you can feel your eyes being rested and 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 a pleasant uh, uh wash over them removing any traces of pain that you had in them from earlier and you can feel the energies of the cosmos and even the energies of this dragon flowing slightly into you before it slowly retracts its paw. And Dania will be like deer caught in headlights look and just <laughs> clutching her staff and just sort of staring will not say anything. <laughs> Uh, it, it will it'll continue talking for just a moment till say, the sea of snakes lie upon the bed of magic, twisted, unformed, unbound by the laws of your plane. So many evils rise upon the horizon. Help is given to these creatures by an unlikely source. And your future is in peril, child. Seven were freed from their confines, spread upon the plain to grow the power of the one who waits, the one who weaves, twists, and turns the plains themselves, the power separating and clawing upon the world, living in the sea. Power is rising, child. And we do not know how much we have left. We are the cosmic beings, the ones who have been here for long before and will be here long after. This he kind of gestures uh, with the stardust uh, around him. Is our plane, our universe, our connection to the world, to the, to, to the very fabric that encompasses all. And even that is being threatened. You are but one. But your power is great. More power with more around you. And you might yet succeed. Do not encounter the one who waits before you are ready, child. But the seven, the seven that were freed. They are waiting. And Aenea will pause, and does the dragon have any sort of mind reading uh, in this plane? It probably would be able to read mm -hmm. some part of you, I would say. Like, it, it would like probably, it would be connected to you in a way. Mm -hmm. And Aenea would feel very like not responsible but mm -hmm. she does agree with the task she was given but she is questioning the reasons behind like the seven and the one mm -hmm. who is to awake and such because mm -hmm. it's very much a waits. why mm -hmm. the one who waits yes and she is questioning but she is very willing to at least follow the task mm -hmm. and see where it takes her so she will nod, she, she will bow with her staff, and we thank you for this gift. I will strive not to misuse it in a way that would waste it. Good. 
You are an interesting creature. I have met few like you before. But time will tell which path you will take. Be wary of the creatures that rule over your land, child. Not all have the same intention. And Anil will nod firmly. She already agrees with this and already has been. <laughs> mm. right, anything else you want to say to him? Or? Mm. I think. She will... She does remember seeing the constellation of snow. Would that be the same as the snowflake? Uh, yeah. So the constellation of uh, snow, which would be in the month of snow, uh, is just a snowflake. Uh, it's one that that constantly is like slightly changing every time that you see it. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it every single month that you've seen the 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 constellation, it ever so slightly changes. So no two months are ever the same. Okay, she will not try to look at the other dragon again, but she does <laughs> bear a glance for the snowflake. Mm -hmm. The snowflake is just kind of wandering across the sky, just kind of seeming to have its own mind and own movements. But uh, for the most part, all the constellations that you see are just floating. Being a snowflake. <laughs> and she will bow again and thank the dragon for their warning. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit too overwhelmed to think of anything else to ask. <laughs> very, very, very fair. Uh, with that, you do feel your eyes starting to close. Um, your, your body is starting to just kind of... You feel it starting to wake up, which means that in this weird mental space, you know you're falling asleep so you can wake up. Uh, you you know this in in intrinsically, but it makes no sense. <laughs> right. But yeah, so you I'll are start... slowly starting to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'll get drowsy and I'll, like, in my drowsy state, I'll give, like, a little wave to the dragon. Like, a little casual, cute wave. <laughs> nice. It's going to... You feel it wave, but... It's like the stardust waves, not its claw. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you, uh, you, you, you fall asleep, your eyes close, and you drift, and then suddenly you, you snap awake. Uh, okay. You bolt up, you, you look around, and probably most people are like sleeping at this point or changing mm -hmm. shifts or whatever. Um, but you, you, you wake up. Not Dakota, Dakota's still awake, actually. <laughs> you ju you just wake up. You stare directly into Dakota's eyes. Yeah, I absolutely do. Dear dear headlights, look. Do you see the horrors too? I don't think so. May wait. Did you go to the astral plane? Unfortunately, not. I wish. Clayton's gun. Oh, and Take and you will just sort of lay back down she's not gonna sleep but she's just stare at the ceiling <laughs> she's like a little bit out of it <laughs> it's adorable like... did you say something no 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 okay well yeah. that is unfortunately we're gonna have to end it tonight because it's about nah. nine <laughs> oh well fair enough mm -hmm. yeah don't worry i got i got a whole bunch of stuff planned for for you three stuff uh next time <sighs> Uh, it's gonna be some good shit. Uh, we're, we're gonna have some fancy shit going on. Uh, some sweet moments, some tender moments, some through a mountain moments. So, <laughs> I was gonna say, just like, I just like, dang, the, the details I suggested to you is just like that. That's a lot less uh, <laughs> common collected compared to all the tours you've shown so far. It's gonna be like <laughs> such a such a moment of, oh, this is super sweet. Boom! Through a fucking mountain. <laughs> what so what are you guys gonna just do? Gal, just Galmar <laughs> screaming at an old, old rival. Old rival there and then screaming back. 
Oh, it's gonna be great. And, like, if you guys... sleep, he's like mumbling or something. Like, what is he singing? <laughs> so I have time to die, bitch. <laughs> something like that. And the best part is you probably about... won't understand him because chances are he's doing it in giant. <laughs> right. So... It was in another language. Like, I think he said bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Everything bagel. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, as always, feel free to hit that follow button and go check out our various other content, including Tables of Tartarus, as well as VODs of Valhalla. Tables of Tartarus is where we post all of our TTRPG content, including our typically done jump chain on Mondays, but that's been kind of rough lately, and uh, this series as well. We also have another one called Shifting Fates, if you guys want to tune into that one, but it's it, it's a little bit older, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and we're going to be doing a couple new things uh in the next couple of days we're most likely going to be doing undertale tomorrow because we finally got caught with all that uh so we mm. should be able to do that hopefully hopefully jump chain on monday wait, if not wait. hey hey sit uh -huh. undertale tomorrow what day is it it's friday Today isn't it is now mind <laughs> I thought it was Saturday for some reason. Sure, Never I hope mind. we don't do Undertale tomorrow. <laughs> That's my birthday. We're here. We're we're not Happy going to do Undertale tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is is uh Dakota's Happy birthday tomorrow, birthday. so give her some love. Uh, we're probably not going to do anything tomorrow because I realize it's her birthday tomorrow. But on Sunday, yeah. Sunday so we, we should we be doing Undertale. <laughs> <laughs> Mima says happy yeah. birthday, Dakota. But on Sunday, we should be doing Undertale. I'm not sure how far we're going to get with that one, but we should get pretty far into it because we're at the core. Monday will hopefully be Jump Chain. If not, we're going to do some more Terraria. And then on Tuesday, we're actually going to not be doing Monster Hunter Rise. We're actually going to be doing some uh, vintage story with Story for her birthday. My it's birthday. Also birthday for story soon. Well, happy birthday to you. Oh. <laughs> Another birthday. Another oh birthday. Gosh. So if you guys are interested in checking all that stuff out, feel free to hit our Discord or go check out our normal schedule on our website. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to see and that we're working on, that we're doing. I'm super excited to share all of it with you. But if you just want to tune in for some more D&D, &D, pop in next week, Friday at 6 p.m. PST. Whatever time that is for you. And hopefully you guys have a good night, day, sleep, awakeness, work, who knows? Have a good night. <laughs> Dakota's gonna have a, a bad time. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs> hey. Bye. 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 Good night.